is January 5th, 2022. I said it for the first time. We'll start, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I hope everybody had a happy new year, nice holiday break. I personally took the longest vacation I've ever taken in my life and stayed home. Oh my God. I got the Rona. Again. <laughs> Again? Congratulations. <laughs> it's a double shot. I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, we're going to have just, we will have um, at least one more person um, or two walking in late just for everybody. So we're expecting Bill and Gary. Um, if it makes sense to catch them up, we will. If it's a disruption, then we'll circle back. Um, in terms of what we're doing tonight, um, we'll go straight to departments. Um, Naomi, um, I did thank you for sending the budget over. Um, I did get a chance to look through it. Um, she got to it as quick as I can. I hope if you guys wanted to, you could take a look. Did you say you have copies of it? Can we do that now? We'll start off that. She said not to, to be fair. Naomi said not to. She did. And I listened. For this once. This time. This time. <laughs> My daughter just told me she saw you today. She's very nice, she said. <laughs> Elizabeth? Where did I see her? Dimitri, was it Dimitri's? Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Tall blonde kid? Yeah. That's my oldest. Get that out. Okay. Thank you. Oh, nice. So, so you got a summary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, so Naomi, when we did this last year, did we start and go right into departments, or did you did you start because? Nope, I took at the end. You, you took at the end. Okay, I just I just wanted to make sure. Um, and then in terms of, um, geez, I would like like to alternate. What did we do the last time between the chief and the chief? Anybody remember? At this that point, that was like a year ago. <laughs> no, no, the, la the last time they were oh. in here too. Let's let. I, mean, I, I like listening to him. <laughs> he said enough, chief. Can I ask one question? Uh, yeah, though? Uh, one sec. Last year, we had gotten um, a worksheet that gave us what the 2020 expenses or would have been 2019. But can we get that? I don't know if you did it the meeting I missed, like the 2020, 20, the 2020 expenses and the 2021 to like a certain date. Like I was looking at my back paperwork and it was like as of October or something like that. Can we get that at some point? So she's talking about the. Uh, the little fine print that you did the, when the, oh, okay. the landscape with all the detail? Well, no, it was actually, it was just a report like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But it's landscape because there's a lot more columns. There's a lot. Yeah. If you want 19, 20, and 21. I don't need 19. Yeah, but it was, the one that we had was like microphone. 20. I know, I'm sorry. sorry. It was like 20 and then 21 as of yeah. whatever you were up to. Yeah. yeah. Year to well, date. it depended on when she had, a, when she had um, audited to. Hmm. And do you want the note column on the right hand side from the department? I think that was there before, yeah. Yep. So, um, in terms of when we're asking for this stuff, do we, um, I think last year we were a little all over the place. Do we want electronics sent to everybody? Is that something she's going to get tonight? What, what, what I don't know. For? I think, I would think that it's probably, if I'm, I don't just want it. I was thinking everyone would get oh, it. Yeah, I'd like <laughs> to do. Beth, that's not something you're going to just go do now, right? No. Okay. No. Well, I, I was, was going to say, if, she was gonna go if do you could right just now. email it to the, to the so committee? Columns, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. We don't waste paper. Um, okay, so um, chief, as usual, I mean, I think we'll uh, let's do high point stuff. The ties, if you want to talk about that, major changes in the budget. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, uh, let's just get to the page. Sorry, if you give me a second. Fire is on. Um, six. 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 Thank you. So as you may recall, over the last three years, we've been on a um, converting what had been per diem positions or part-time positions into full-time employees. And so we've, we're uh, three years complete through a four-year plan. Um, we've high, we have six full-time positions. We are fully staffed and we've been operating um, <clears throat> over the last two years in this COVID environment and uh, it's, it has been very helpful to have our own employees versus renting them from other places. 
uh, it has been a challenge and, and it's been a grind. And um, so I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, to acknowledge um, the effort put forth by the members of the department um, that have, you know, stepped up to, to answer the call. And it's been, like I said, it's been a grind. It's been, um, uh, people have worked a lot of hours and, and they've, you know, to the, um, over multiple days at times, right? They may come to work and be at work for three days, for, for three 24-hour days. Um, <clears throat> uh, that being said, we uh, come to the, the um, proposed budget of, of 2022, and uh, our proposed budget number at the bottom is the same as our default number. Uh, for the third year in a row. We uh, recognize that we are asking a lot of the taxpayers to support our um, transition from part-time to full-time employees, and so we have endeavored to, um, where we can, not increase the budget uh, if we have the ability not to, right? <clears throat> Other than the extent that it's going to increase naturally just by the fact that we're hiring people. Uh, that said, uh, in a nutshell, our budget is um, kind of divided into two sections. One is related to, to uh, salary, if you will, or staff <clears throat> and wages, and everything else is what we refer to as below the line. We had, a, uh, in this proposed budget, we have about roughly $10,000 worth of increases that are below the line and uh, over the default budget. Can I just, are we talking yep. about like the 303, 304? <clears throat> Just uh, we haven't got there yet, but, okay. uh, and then everything above the line that is related to wages and benefits, uh, we had about a $10,000 reduction, um, <laughs> basically because the people that we hired uh, are uh, a little bit less expensive than what the model was going into this endeavor. So um, all kind of, kind of balances out. So we do have some increases, but we also have some decreases as well. <coughs> Do you want me to go through well, the, the stuff that changed? So, no, I actually, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking literally when you said above the line and below the line. I was just asking you where the, between the, it, um, the salary and wages was. Is it literally, oh, so the is line, it literally split? Yeah, the line is just above telephone. So 315 and above is what I refer to as above the line. Thank Those you, Those are all Chief. related to um, wages, benefits, uh, insurance, that kind of stuff, and then did you change the numbers, Beth? Yeah. <laughs> My bad. No, no issue, <laughs> as long as we know. So right. above. She so basically, I think she just changed those today. She's not. She's <laughs> messing with you. You were right. Uh, so everything above telephone is related to wage or somehow related to wage or, or an actual position. Everything below the line is stuff that's related to services, contracts, or things, if you will. I'm sorry, Bob. So I, I cut you off. You had started to ask the question about, I think, what you wanted to talk about. I think you had the full question. Do you want to just talk about, is there anything specific on the lines? Uh, not really. I mean, if you want to ask a question, I'll do my best to, to answer it. Um, the things that we saw that were um, decreases is we had substantial decreases in, in health insurance because of the way our employees uh, chose their health insurance, right? We went into budget with a worst case scenario of a family plan. And if so, oh, I was wondering that. as in the, in the Warren article, right? The cost associated with the Warren article is a family plan. And um, we have, I don't think we have any that are taking family plans. So there's a savings there. That's the 21,000 health insurance line, 21,117, I think. Sure. <clears throat> well, I saw it in other departments. That's the reason why I'm so well, curious. Well, there's two I different parts to that, right? So there's health insurance as a line. Yeah. And then above that, I think, is a, buy, <coughs> is a buyout line, right? So you have to kind of take a delta between oh, the two. Oh, I lines. see that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we had a, a decrease in the amount that we anticipated was going to be for retirement, a cost associated with the retirement system. 
So, we, you know, those are two fairly substantial savings there. Why did that go down? Uh, the question Neil asked is why did that go down for the public? The retirement line. The retirement yeah, so line. So the retirement line, we went into um, into the Warren article is we assume that that person is in group two and we have some people who are not currently in group two, uh, but we have a couple people that made transition into group two in the 22 budget to get my numbers straight. <clears throat> Question, Chief. Yep. Uh, so, in terms of the, um, so it's 294. Well, you actually don't have the cheats. It's the. Oh, I got that. I okay, so 294. In the bigger uh, print one, it's different. <laughs> 294. So yes. that that's a the 30,000 increase. Um, so 2021 was 269 and change. Default was 302, which I assume because of what we voted in. Yep. Um, but it looks to be like 60,000 total. Just can you just elaborate why it's, it looks like, is that a split amount for the one time full-time firefighter where it's half a year or why is it 30 increase um, for the full-time firefighters? Cause we brought in two firefighters. My assumption and Beth could might better answer this is because, because it's a six more months than original. Yeah. So when we put the Warren article out is we do 26 weeks or 25 weeks um, is that initial year. Mm -hmm. And then the second year, which this is showing that second year of two positions, is that increase in cost for 12 months versus six. Okay. Or 52 weeks versus 25. <coughs> Thank you, Chief. Yep. Any other questions for the Chief? Uh, things that were, you know, substantial um, fuel, right? Fuel in, in this coming year uh, was a, a chunk of money. Um, vehicle maintenance, we've been over expensed in that for several years, and so we um, are trying to deal with that issue. Um, Neil has a question. All right, go ahead, Neil. All right. Chief, is there anything I'm sorry, Neil. I'm paid for out of the special fund? Neil, I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I should have asked you to come up. I, I just keep forgetting that you're not on a microphone, and people will want to hear your question. Uh, thank you, Tom. Yes. Uh, Chief, is there anything in your budget that's going to be paid for, not out of taxes, but out of the special fund? In the operating budget, no. Thank you. <clears throat> The communication issue, is there going to be a warrant? Is there going to be a warrant article? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, and I'm prepared to talk to that if you would like to. I was hoping once we get done with this, yep. yes. Sure. Um, but we'll pause for a second. Is any other questions so far for the chief? Can I just ask why the protective clothing and the, the uniforms went down by like $8,000? Do we just not need as many as we had budgeted? No, uh, so the Warren article for the full-time staff uh, included in that is some certain one-time expenses, turnout gear, uniforms, and uh, physicals and immunizations. And so it gets added into the approved budget number, okay. uh, but comes, comes back out for the default and proposed, is that? On, for both, yeah, because they're one-time okay. expenses. <clears throat> So we segue to uh, Warren articles, folks. Looks like, uh, yeah. Uh, so the fire department has three warrant articles. One is for an ambulance for $350,000. That was in the CIP presentation. Um, and that is to be paid for from the vehicle and equipment replacement fund. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's zero cost uh, um, to the taxpayer for that purchase. Uh, the other one is for, uh, will be for the two, the last two full-time firefighters, firefighter EMTs. And uh, that's a very typical Warren article for us as far as the verbiage goes. The untypical thing that we saw in the past is that we were able to offset the entire cost of that first year um, with operating expense or operating budget um, give back. Each year we, we would, 
the typical article read about it cost you about $100,000 for a half year for two people, and then we gave back, we offset that with a give back from the operating budget. <clears throat> She's making copies. Okay. She's making copies of his three articles. Okay. Great, yep. thank you. And so this year, uh, because we were a little bit conservative in years past and that we can actually see as we get closer to the finish line, you know, things become more in focus, is that we were able to um, pay for that entire first year with an offset from the operating budget. So if, if the voters said, yep, we would like to, to um, hire those last two full-time uh, people, and we vote yes, is there a corresponding reduction so that the net effect on the to the voter is zero. Does that make sense? Almost. I can use my hands more. And is, it the, <laughs> is, it, is that the case this year? That is the case this year. It is, okay. Yeah. In years past, it wasn't, um, I want to say it was like 35 to 45,000 we, we chipped in, and this year we can do the whole thing because we're, kind of, we're at the finish line and we can see that, well, we're not going to need this and you know, we have that experience of saying we don't need this and this and this. So, so I, and I'm sorry, Neil, why don't you go first? Come on up. At least we're going to ask what it is. Is that better? Thank you, Tom. Chief, if you don't need all of those things, why don't you cut those out of the 2022 budget? Thank you. Well, the reason why we're able to cut it out of the 22 budget is because we're, we're hiring full-time people to do the functions that we're paying someone else to do that. Right. So we're still spending that money uh, in the per diem program because we're basically replacing a per diem employee and those expenses related to that with a full-time employee. And so we're able to essentially take it out of this bucket and put it into this bucket. So I'm going to... Uh, very similar to how we've done in the last three years. It's just a different amount of money. I, I want to just, um, I want to pause and give everybody maybe yep. two to five minutes to just read it. Do I have that one? And to confirm, you always just assume the health insurance will be the family plan because that is Go, the most Going expensive. into it, yep. Mm -hmm. As opposed to we assume a, a two-person and because okay. it's substantially different. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, why don't we just put um, stop for a second on the Warren article for the two firefighters first because I think we're going to want to probably hear about the other one afterwards. Any questions on further questions on the full-time firefighter? Going once, going twice. Okay. And obviously the um, the ambulance one's pretty self-explanatory. <coughs> I mean, yep. do you want to talk about the fire rescue one? Yeah, so the, um, the radio... And, it, and it's we'll do the best that we can here so we have an issue with the radio system everyone's heard about it for a long time um, and the solution is very expensive our portion of that is is because um, we're kind of piggybacking onto the proposal, if you will, right? Because the police department is building a system for their radio system, <clears throat> uh, and then ours would be piggybacked onto that if we were going to stay, basically as we are today. And the price tag on that is about for fires alone is is in the ballpark of like four hundred thousand dollars. In the discussion with Goffstown Dispatch. Uh, this summer when we were talking about some other issues was it was raised the concept was raised that at some point in the future which which there was no 
time frame put on it, but at some point in the future, Goffstown Dispatch, who dispatches Goffstown Police and Fire, Ware Police and Fire, New Boston Police and Fire, Dunbarton Police, anybody else? I think that's about it. <clears throat> um, may get to the point where they're at capacity and the amount of money that we provide them this is a very blunt conversation was uh, our twenty five thousand dollars that we pay Goffstown dispatch to dispatch force really isn't worth their trouble right to be frank and um, if you have ever we when the police go out for a call right they're very attentive to the police department and because they they have to be right they're out there by themselves in, in some situations uh and on the fire side um I, i'll be very frank they seem less attentive certainly to the wear fire and so when uh so this whole concept kind of came out of the blue is like at some point maybe even soon they may say you know what it, it's not worth the the angst and effort and everything to dispatch where fire um, going forward that might be three years from now it might be six years from now who knows so as we go to design this radio system to replace the, the really the failed system that we have um, the price tag for the fire department portion is is in the ballpark of four hundred thousand dollars well it doesn't make a lot of sense to spend $400,000 on us, get told three years from now to say, we really can't support you guys anymore out of Goffstown Dispatch, and we have to go find someone else, and that other person's gonna be capital area fire mutual aid. Um, because the, all the money we just put in the system, most of that wouldn't be used by capital area. So- but 400 grand wouldn't be to <clears throat> still have the 25 grand going to Goffstown Fire or on Goffstown Dispatch to be your, your dispatch. That, that, wouldn't solve, that wouldn't solve that leg of the, of the problem. The 400,000 would improve the radio. Would, would, the assumption is that our 400,000, based on modeling, will have a great radio system. Yeah. Goffstown will be dispatching us <laughs> still for the 25 grand. That's what it is this year. Okay. Um, if Goffstown said we're not interested in doing that anymore, that four hundred thousand dollar radio system becomes very worthless. And if we go to Capital Area, which is really the next place to go, uh, they're not going to use any of that equipment. So you're spending that money gotcha. potentially with a really finite lifespan. Because so it can became, I just ask a question? Because yep. you need a different kind of equipment to connect with them. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I, I think I'll get to that okay. in a sec. So um, we had looked at uh, three years ago, I think. Uh, we put out for RFP because our contract was up with Goffstown. It's like, who would like to dispatch for us? Um, there are really two contenders. There, there was uh, Goffstown capital area we reached out to southwest new hampshire uh, they do a regional dispatch center uh, we reached out to bedford um, and uh, mac base which i think is in milford they were near collapse at that point so that really wasn't a viable option uh, and so you really had two we got two responses one from capital area one from goffstown fire mutual aid Goffstown is much less expensive, but we own everything, right? They dispatch for us. That's all they do. It's our radio system, so if it fails, it's on us. It's, everything else is, is ours. Capital area is more expensive for sure. However, it's not just a radio system. That's a big component of it, but you also get many other things. You're, you're buying into a mutual aid system as a member and and not just the dispatch service piece they own the entire radio system um, that covers 
I think it's 23 communities from as far east as Northwood all the way over to there's a, an antenna on Wolf Hill and Daring. We're kind of surrounded by capillary. <clears throat> I think they have a seven antenna um, simulcast system. Um, very robust. They have a, I think they have at least 11 uh, dispatchers. Um, they have a mutual aid coordinator. They do a whole bunch of other stuff that we can talk about. Um, but really the crux of it came down to talking, trying to keep it apples to apples to the radio system is uh, it became very obvious that now is probably the time to sever the relationship with Goffstown and go to capillary. And again, looking at that apples to apples comparison is we can walk away from the radio system as it is today uh, and get onto their system and for um, we could really turn key and be 85% of where we want to be. It would just mean your yearly cost would would be more than your 400 grand. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an initial dump. It would be a, a recurring every year money. Yeah. So uh, right now we are spending approximately uh, $40,000. So we have a $25,000 fee with Goffstown to provide dispatch services. We're in Sauhegan Mutual Aid, which is a couple thousand dollars. We're spending fifteen, seventeen thousand for to maintain the radio system um, annually. And there was one more, Ben. Anyways, there's one more piece of that. Okay. All totals up to around forty thousand dollars. To go to capital area, it's it's twice as much money to go to capital area on, for a whole year. And so, again, kind of looking at that piece of how much money do we want to put in the system to for the cheap dispatch price, and then find out three years from now, well. You, you paid a lot of money for that three years. You didn't pay 25, you paid 125 a year, you know. Um, I might be a little bit lost, so forgive Sorry. me. Forgive me. It's, it's I like not. to go in the weeds. So, <laughs> it's, so it seems to me like there's, there's, you're proposing two options, which is, no, there's three. You shake his head. There's do nothing, for instance. Do nothing, we, we're at risk of them saying, we can't support you anymore. Is that correct in Goffstown? I'm, I'm, I have one option. We would like to go become members of the Capillary Fire Mutual Aid Group. And with that membership, we get dispatch services and a radio system from them. Oh, no, that's not what I'm saying for an option. I'm saying if the taxpayers vote it down. If the I, I realize you're proposing right. so one, that, one solution. That's what our proposal is. If the taxpayers say yes, great, we move on. If the taxpayers say no, then we have a failed radio system, just like the police do, that needs to be fixed. We can stay with Goffstown Dispatch, right, for $25,000, and then we can turn around and put in 400-ish. Okay, so that was the, so, and I apologize yep. if I wasn't following. Originally, it was, let's, if we fix this the right way, what we thought it the right way at the time was about 400000 that's too much money. Let's look at capital area. It's significantly less, and it has a similar uh, result. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And, and what it does is it, it, it transfers ownership of that radio system, right? Instead of us buying one and maintaining it going forward, is it, is it the radio system is owned by the membership of capital area mutual aid. And so the, the cost to maintain that is spread out amongst 23 communities, um, as well as all the other costs that are associated with, so with that. To, do you want to go first? Okay. So to clarify, <clears throat> you could stay with Goffstown for the 25K, invest the 400K, but then Goffstown could say, we can't take you anymore, and then we basically have a $400,000 nothing. 
that that's the that's the worst case scenario right, right. right? Mm -hmm. um, and we like I said we could go get on the radio system tomorrow and and be better than we are today mm -hmm. and we are I mean I, I don't think it's we're we're two years away from being live with the radio system Got it. right which may completely fail between now and and then. So Neil had a question next, and then Tom. And I have some comparison as to what more we get going that way than that way. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, Chief, the capital area system, do they have at any point in their history uh, put a surcharge on the towns to cover the cost of new equipment or replacing equipment so that the 84,000 at least for a year or maybe permanently would go up significantly higher if they had to replace all of their equipment or is that built in to the 84,000 so the what they do is they take the entire budget of providing dispatch services as well as um, the cost for the person who, the coordinator for all of the capital area stuff, uh, the hazardous materials team that goes along with that, uh, and all the other ancillary things that they have expenses for. Uh, and then they has a formula that's based on population and assessed value um, to divvy up those costs in, in arguably an equitable way between the communities. Um, that cost, changes every year right depends on how much they spent and then it gets divided up uh, they have because they're a regional system instead of a local system which we are a local system um, they are have been very successful at um, because they're a regional system in the grants world right so they can go out and say hey we'd like to have a grant to replace um, our base station radios because we serve 23 communities essentially all of Merrimack County um, you know they're looked on more favorably than we're going to give where money for their one radio um, but yes it does change uh, it does change each year uh, then perhaps you could give us a 10 or a 15 year history of the payments made by a comparable town to where so we can see what the variation is from year to year because even with grants if they have to pay replace the system our eighty four thousand dollars could rise significantly and we need to I, at least i would like to see that before making a commitment uh, in the direction that you're proposing to go so sure. I, I think we need some more information Tom, would you mind if i just made one more point on neil's point oh, that's um i what, the thing that came to my head is how does that affect us from the town's budget perspective too so if this gets voted for this dollar amount and that cost goes up well it's a proof of that dollar amount does it if it goes up do we have to put another warrant article i don't quite understand how that works i don't know how that works yeah, yeah if you if you you may know how that works as well <laughs> so um it's because it's it's not a contract right it's an intergovernmental um in agreement is that the for the purposes of sb2 is that the amount that's been previously approved um is in the default budget just like every other expense right and so in the proposed budget would be the new amount whether it's up or down thank you yeah. and so tom sorry i was tom had a no, question that's Next. okay I mean, this this is part of a big picture there's uh, those people who have been involved with the selectman speeding for the last few times around knows that there's going to be another warrant article that relates to communication as well and includes the police department really focuses on the police department i think that's what you're referring to bob now does when you talk about the four hundred thousand, that's your piece of that with it, when we are presented that other warrant article would it actually be less by a certain amount if you go to capital and that's that's where the four hundred thousand dollars is that you're talking about yeah and whether that whole four hundred thousand comes out of that number i don't know i'm i'm not that in the weeds on that however um there would be a reduction in in the price that you would see because we're not they're going to i believe present a price that includes both of us in golfstown 
if this article moves forward, I would imagine there's a reduction to that number um, with that. I don't think they've ironed out all of the numbers, as you can see. Do you have the warrant article listed? Oh, I gave mine to you? Bill. Yeah, so yeah. I, the last I saw it, there were a few, not on mine, but on the, right, yeah, the town-wide ones. There, there's it's a few the blanks same. in in the last one that I saw because they don't know the numbers of that, the total numbers of that. Um, if memory serves me correct, uh, they were looking at a less than 2% increase in um, the cost of, right? So that our cost was about 2%. Uh, the thing that affected our cost this year, as most places, right, is we saw our assessed value go up um, in our population, right? We're, we, both of the two things that they use, population and assessed value, because we're large compared to most communities, um, right, so we suffer a little bit with that. And, and I guess the, the thing is that we could pay a little bit out of the time and get a much better product, right, annually, with, or we could put a big chunk of money into this um, that, that I, I feel has a really finite life. You had other questions. Yeah, you had to follow up, really. Excuse me. Am I correct that if we go for the 400000 that comes out of your special account and doesn't come out of taxpayer dollars uh, in the tax rate? Would that be the case? Uh, you'd have to talk with this selectman, but I don't believe that's how it's intended today. Then where's the 400000 coming from? Is, it a, is there some um, sort of a grant? Actually, so I... I I would just like to, I know she's not on the microphone, did you agree with what Bob's statement was? It's not going to come out of the special revenue Okay, so just, but, just I just wanted to confirm because I saw her shake her head what, what Bob said. Here today, that, that's, that's not what it's intended could, for. Could we find out what the source of the $400,000 would be if, in fact, the town goes that route? I don't think Bob was proposing that they go that route at all, so. I, I understand yep. that. Are we going to talk about that when they propose this Warren article? Then they'll tell so us where the money's coming from? We're a little. Yeah, yeah. I, so I think the answer is we're going to talk about it um, with the town know. Warren articles. I'm still looking for prices for leases and a prepayment penalty and some other things that we're going to have so we can make a final judgment Monday night. So you don't have that article. So, so I think we should table this. I think they're good questions, but it yeah. sound, makes sense yeah. to, to table it for the rest of the information. I, I understand. The other, the other source will be federal money for uh, COVID money. That would be which nice. Is, it's ARPA. I'm sorry? It's ARPA. Whatever an acronym you want to use. Yeah, whatever the acronym. <laughs> so in, in just to perhaps finish up, right, because we're the cart's a little before the horse, in the Warren article discussion, um, this question needs to be answered, right, before we get to where we're building a radio system, which is are we staying or are we going? And we need to have a vote of the community to yes or no. Um, if it's yes, we, we move forward, and if it's no, then we become much more active in that discussion of what does that radio system look like and how much does it cost? Right, so because of we need, right, we get the bite at the apple in March each year. If, if we say no or we don't, let's say we just table it and we don't even bring it to the voters, then um, that whole design and cost and all that stuff is either still up in the air because we don't, are we going to come back next March and get a vote on it? Or um, we just say, well, we'll just live with it, and it's 400K-ish or whatever, and we stay in Golfstown. So I, I think it's important, and we can certainly come back and talk about it once we have the bigger discussion of the radio system, but at some point we need to answer this question of are we going to go or not go because it has a, one, a big price tag if we stay and um, affects the whole design of the system. I think Bob already answered uh, because I, I think that we have to see the other article and know the funding source and all the things that are going yep. to be put together uh, next Monday in order to uh, 
see the impact one way or the other of this. It is a pretty substantial package that will be presented uh, after the board makes their decision on the uh, overall communication package that they're talking yeah. about. And, and to be clear, on this Warren article, we're asking for, I think it's 21 and change, it represents the, a quarter, right? Uh, <coughs> the last quarter of the year from September to December um, that we would be in the mutual aid group. Um, <coughs> And we would be out of and we would be out of golf zone going forward from there. So that's that's what we're asking for. Thank you, yeah. Chief. You let him go first. No, I'm fine. <laughs> I like listening. To you. You know, it's it, it. I understand it's awful. Well, I appreciate that. I didn't realize how, just how many moving parts were intertwined. So that makes sense to it, to talk about it. It's very later. twisted together, and you know it's. But this isn't um, the, the police is very is very clear, right? They're they're staying in Goffstown. They're building a radio system. If we're going to be a part of that going forward, there's a price tag to it. I don't feel it's worth paying that money. Um, okay. You know, I think now is the time to go. So. Thanks, Chief. Okay. Recognize Chief Moore. Do you have the here? Oh, we do. I'm sorry. I, I do want to throw one part on that. Just yeah. why doesn't the police department also look at building capital one? As the chief, chief mentioned, it's Merrimack County. We rely a lot on mutual aid. If we don't have the staffing to respond to calls for service. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so wrong. Yeah, it is. Do we we'll close the door or no? Hey, Chief. I got it. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. I didn't. We'll just pause for a minute. Well, if Neil doesn't want to participate in the meeting, he doesn't have to. Okay. We'll leave yep. it at that. So obviously, where's in Hillsborough County? So most of the uh, surrounding jurisdictions in Hillsborough County are on dispatched on Golfstown. So we get real-time information from them on what kind of calls they're having if they're requesting our assistance or vice versa so we would lose that if we went to capital one which is huge for safety everything would be going through the dispatch center and then the dispatch center would be relaying to us rather than us just switching over to the new boston's radio channel and listen straight to the officer make sense yeah so that's why I, that's not even a concern although i hear good things about capital one they're just the wrong county okay that that cleared up for me a little bit there so I'm sorry. So we have, um, an apology, Chief. I do want to pause for a second. Um, so we have the library here. Yep, here. Um, I'm going to propose. Yeah, I'm going to propose, Chief, if you don't mind, because I, I looked at their budgets and I think it's going to be pretty quick. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess, well, library, do you want to uh, come on up and in, 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 introduce yourself? And I didn't realize you guys were here. Okay, um, oh, before we move forward, can I just get names? So I can oh, yeah, my name is Clay Creasy, and um, I'm the director of the Ware Public Library. Can you spell your last name so I don't butcher it? Yeah, it right, it's uh, K R I E S E. K R I E S E. Yes, ma'am. I've been known to, to butcher names. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been known to mispronunciate, <laughs> uh, mispronunciate myself. Um, so um, the uh, so the the budget. Um, I have a more detailed budget. Would you like me to pass that out? I think we got a detailed Dude. budget. No. No. Oh, it's he more. more and absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about no issue. Yeah, no apology needed. Appreciate yeah. you being prepared. Thank you. Okay, so this looks a little different than what I had here. Any new pieces? 
library was one. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, the uh, because on on the uh, the this packet the, there is an admission of our operating budget. Um, so on line five seventy two under the third column, the number sh there should be a four zero six five zero forty thousand dollars six hundred fifty. I'm oh, sorry, forty thousand six hundred fifty dollars. I'm, I'm sorry. What line should that be on? Um, on on five seventy two. Five seventy two. It should have four thousand six hundred fifty dollars. And so on um, five seventy four. Can I stop for a second? Yes. Are you mm -hmm. talking about in the omitted column, the the, the sec right. the, the yeah. cell? So four forty six five five yeah. zero. Thank you. Right. Yeah. So that's going to change. The uh, amount in um, on 574 beneath it, it should have um, 263859, so uh, 263,859 dollars. So, um, and um, could you repeat that, Clay? Yeah, uh, 2060. Uh, Two hundred sixty-three thousand and eight hundred fifty-nine dollars. It matches the paper that he just passed. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. So, sorry about that omission, uh, that error there. So, oh, there it is. right. So, um, so, basically, the operations, our operation budget is going to be forty-five dollars lower this year. Um, our personnel budget is on the increase, but that was due to the town warrant article that was passed back in March. Um, then, is there any um, questions? Uh, just one, I think. Yeah. Give us a second. Just sure. Please. Yeah. Yeah. To your time. I'm sorry. So the the wages was the increase. Right. It was the 1984. You said the and then NHRS. That's retirement. So there's no other. Are those are only substantial increases those two line items pretty much right yeah there's a we have a longevity bonus which is on our operations manual um, so that's that seven hundred fifty dollars as well that's on the on the the packet the uh, 566 that line for seven hundred fifty dollars so um, yeah just um it's just for the uh, the three percent increase that was voted in uh, back in March so but it's a two percent increase over mm -hmm last year because you know March wasn't the entire year so Does anybody have any questions need more time really pretty straightforward appreciate okay. you coming down to talk yeah. through thank yeah you thank so much. you yeah um, maybe we can have Park next. Um, where is it? Let me get to it. Janine Lynch, Parks and Rec's chairman. J A N E E N L E N T S. She listens to instructions. I don't. Very well. I had to get my fingers there. Okay. G J A N E E N. Okay. L E N T S C H. Thanks. Okay. So we just have um, a few lines we're looking to increase, and um, so I'll start first. We have the outside services, and this is for porta potties. So this is basically the companies have been our company right now that we're with American Guardian, who we're looking to switch to Hennick Septic because American Guardian's been less than stellar in showing up, um, following through, maintaining, being there when they're supposed to. Um, so Hennick Receptic's a, a little more expensive, and also it's just they're all increasing their prices regardless of even if we stay with American Guardian, they're increasing their prices. Um, we're also um, looking to add two more porta potties We currently have two at Bolton. And we only have one at Ineson and one at Purington, and we want to increase that to two at Ineson and two at Purington because the fields are getting more usage and more sports teams. Um, and uh, also, um, 
we've been, it looks like a really large number, but what we've been doing is we've been going over budget for the last few years in this specific line item car and borrowing it from other places. So it's kind of like a big catch up. We haven't asked for the increase in the porta potties in the fast, past years. That's kind of a change of the whole entire board's brand new in the last two to three years. So we're trying to kind of catch up and get the hang of this. So that's why the number looks really large because we've been going over budget with this line item and borrowing it from other places where we really needed it. Um, any questions about that line item? Yeah, uh, my only question is about where <coughs> it is. I was, I think it was our you know, last meeting of the meeting before, and it might have been Tom was talking about it, that it was going to be a warrant for outside services. No, there's a warrant I have for um, payroll, for um, wages. Okay, so it, it, we might want to take a look at the meeting minutes. Um, okay. So it was never going to be a warrant. No, it might I, be a, a nope. misprint in our. When I presented notes. this to the board of selectmen, the only one they wanted for board, for the warrant article was for the salary increase. Okay. For the park um, Chase Park staff. Okay. Um. So to move on, then rubbish removal. Uh, same situation with the with the dumpsters. Their increases, and also we're looking into which is more economical. There's one or two dumpsters that um, are smaller and um, four, two yard versus four yard. So we're looking into whether or not to increase the dumpster or just have them emptied more often because they're getting um, filled up. So um, that's the thousand dollar increase for rubbish removal. Any questions with that? And um, park repairs, we're asking for an additional $500. It's just, again, it's more of a catch up with Bolton Park. Um, there's uh, the whole end of the slide is um, cracked. The whole tube end needs to be um, replaced. And their catalog price, you know, when we get the estimate prices, they're increasing with the price of plastic. Also, the bubbles being cracked on the playset. Um, to be replaced with a uh, new plastic so it's just it's just kind of the regular repairs but they're becoming more expensive with the prices of plastic and just um so they're mostly cost increases from the companies that we're dealing with those are the proposed for the budget okay as for the warrant article article we're proposing twenty five hundred dollars that is a dollar an hour for employees to be retained to come back so Last year, we had a really big turnover of almost all brand new staff, and that it's not, it does a little bit more for resources of having to train and have our supervisor on longer. So, we're hoping to retain more by offering a dollar an hour raise um, to the existing staff. And we have about a thousand hours that the lake is open during the summer, and that averages about um, two and a half people per hour. So, that's the $2,500 here for that for the season any questions everybody good and we yeah the board of selectmen proposed that to be a warrant article because um we had asked for um the same thing the year before um and uh it, they made it a warrant article then too so i just wanted to make it the same fair well, thank you very much and it won't go over. everybody's good yeah, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Plain and simple. Thank you. Um, sorry? Oh, I didn't discuss. Do you have any questions about my warrant? He has a warrant article. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't know you had one. So we'll call the <laughs> library direct up for his warrant article. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if that was, I didn't realize it was. Uh, basically, my warrant article is, is the same um, as Parks and Rec. It's a dollar per hour per staff member. Um, so, um, but that's for the for for wages, not for salary. So that would not affect my salary. But it's for the the rest of our staff. And um, much of that is just due to our staff. They they our librarians are paid lower, are below average compared to uh, other New Hampshire state libraries. We're below the New Hampshire state um, average, and uh, we're sig significantly lower than other neighboring libraries as well. So, no, I don't really want to split hairs, but do you have a kind of a rough idea of what the average is, or do you know what those? Uh, yeah, actually, like? I had I had a presentation at the selectmen meeting that had the numbers. Um, uh, it's just, uh, I, sorry. I mean, are we off a yeah. few dollars an hour, or is we talking? Um, it just it depends on which one, but um, like for example, a, a, our children's librarian is currently making in the seventeen. 
um, actually I have the number right here. Um, she is currently making, um, I'm sorry, she, uh, she's currently making uh, $16.29 an hour and uh, the uh, average uh, New Hampshire State, uh, Children's Librarian makes $21 an hour. Oh, so it's pretty simple. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So, and the same thing, like actually with, uh, it's even worse with, um, with, for the young adult librarian as well, because our young adult librarian makes about 14 an hour and, and it's, uh, it's uh, the young adult librarians that make also about, about 21 an hour, so. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think uh, Bill's, yeah. sorry, oh, go ahead, Bill had his hand up. Oh yeah, Bill, you need to be, sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> his voice carries you forget he's not on a microphone yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's a technical file <laughs> yeah no <laughs> i call that i call that earlier tonight uh how is that affected by the uh the librarian staff how is it affected by this town-wide uh percentage increases on wages Do, does that apply to your people as well uh, good question if that warrant article is also passed that will go in addition to this dollar per okay so yes Any questions on the left? Jeff, I'm um, sorry, Jeff. How much is the Warren article that you're proposing? It is, um, I'm sorry, I, I was not ready to talk about the Warren article. Uh, how darn it. Yeah. $6,047. Okay. Yeah. $6,047. That's for next year, but then the proceeding years is going to be $8,000. Oh, it'll be $8,060 for the whole year. Right, yeah. So it's a little less than $1 per resident. Other questions? All right, thank you again. All right, thank you. So I think we're ready for the chief. Do we interrupt him yet and have somebody else up? Yeah, I'd like to, but I can't. <laughs> There's no one else here. <laughs> M O O R E. I got it. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to write or present? No, I'm going to present. Uh, qu just a quick question. Point. So you typically pivot during the other meetings when this happens? It just doesn't work? Okay. Yeah. This is online <laughs> under the police department's <laughs> website, <laughs> chief of police budget. All right. So any of the public can go to it and see it and follow Correct. along. I think it pulls out. Yeah. There was my little plug just on the wrong side for convenience. It's I need glasses. Oh, uh, Jeff, Jeff wasn't sitting in front of the projector. He's a little taller, so that worked out okay. You want to move over, Jeff, so you can actually see. Oh. No, he's, he wasn't in the way for me. No, so he could see. I can't turn my head. <laughs> it's not All right. owl. <laughs> so I'll give a – I'm just going to hit each slide as an overview because it's pretty much the same thing as the past three years. Uh, we're becoming – it's becoming to become it was it's starting to become operationally imperative that a budget pass uh, with inflation going up uh, my operational budget obviously isn't keeping up with the costs um, because it's pretty much a line item budget every line is accounted for something and we're going to go through that uh, just since I've been here uh, you can see the national inflation rate was 1.81% uh, 20 in 2019 2020 was 1.23 percent is projected at 4 percent and I think that's a very conservative projection uh, this year so since I've been here uh, the power of my operating budget and the operating budget is anything except for salary and benefits uh, decreased by 29.35 percent now some of that was self-induced as you've heard last year because we got rid of our prosecutor who was seventy eight thousand dollars and we did that uh, we took over those duties. Uh, Officer Perslow does those duties. Uh, we still have some prosecutor uh, salary adjustments, but since that was contractual and the budget didn't pass, we lost that funding, which was also going to provide several lines uh, of equipment for us that's been on our books for 10 years, but it's never been incorporated in our budget. We've had ta tasers, which we weren't aware, over 10 years now because some of them were over 10 years old. Um, that's never been on the police department budget. So in order to be transparent, it's imperative that a budget actually pass so you can see what we actually spend our money on. Um, this is just some of the lines that we'll be talking about here in a second. 
where we're adjusting, but just keep in mind that 78,000 we can get to use. Why is passing a budget important? And I'm just going to hit this. It comes officer safety. They want to work in a place where they, they have the correct equipment to do the job and feel like they'll be able to go home at night. And that's what we're about. Uh, we don't have a lot of fluff in our budget. It's basic ballistic equipment and defensive weapons. But we'll go through that as we go through each line. Uh, salary and benefits. This is the majority of my budget, 86.39% of the budget. A uh, big part of that was the New Hampshire retirement system has increased their contributions, required the town to pay an additional $83,790 between 2020 and 2022. So some of these we had no cho choice to uh, increase. So when you see my overall budget, the increase is 56,000. Keep in mind, we've absorbed that and we've also gotten rid of a prosecutor. So if the prosecutor was applied, I'd actually be, I'd actually be giving some money back and still being able to get what I did. 70,000, 78,000 minus the 56,000 increase. All right, so line by line. So we've just gone through, I'm not gonna, unless anybody wants to talk about any salary and benefits, I'm just gonna go into operational expenses. Uh, prosecutor evidence collection, uh, no change. This is what this pays for. Uh, one new expense for this is ICAC. We, there's professional investigators that deal with crimes against children. Uh, they've asked us to help fund them $1,000 for a year. They provided uh, investigative casework uh, relevant to 12 cases in just 2020 alone. If we hired a detective, we wouldn't, obviously, it costs a lot more than just $1,000 a year to hire somebody with that amount of expertise. And I'm sure you've heard this say me over and over. There is a lot of crimes against children, not only in New Hampshire, but especially in where in Hillsborough County. Uh, police record storage line 321. Uh, this was previously not, not funded. Uh, we have a set of file cabinets. We ran out of room on those. We were in the last row of what we had available. So we had to go to Manchester to find storage where we have about 78 boxes in storage of police records. We're required to maintain them per record retention laws, but we had to go outside the building to be able to actually store them somewhere. Prosecutor services. Now this is, if you can see in 2020, this is where it was 78,000. It went down to zero because it was contractual. I'm proposing uh, 13,250. What we do is we have an attorney on retainer available 24 seven to ask, answer any legal questions. He also helps us with cases. Uh, if he has to go to court for us, he charges us $55 an hour, which is extremely reasonable. Um, we don't use him that much. I think we've used him two cases in all of last year. And then we pay a stipend to our prosecutor on duty because it is a, an, a lot of extra work, uh, Officer Perslow, to actually take care of the prosecutor responsibilities for us. Um, she does anything misdemeanor-wise. The county attorney does anything felony-wise. And then we have our attorney on retainer to help us bridge those gaps with anything legal. So we went from 78 to 13,250. Telephone, no change. Police dispatch, dispatch, there was a contractual increase because uh, we were required, well, we needed to have Golfstown <coughs> provide IT service for us on our mobile computers we keep in the cars. So it went up a little bit. Uh, police recruitment. So good news, we're fully staffed. I don't expect to have to recruit anybody. I'm reducing this, uh, proposing to reduce this by $750 initially, and that will allow me to still hire three officers a year. Like I said, I don't expect to hire anybody in this next year. We plan on keeping the people we got. So uh, police accreditation, we don't use that anymore uh, for national accreditation, so it's proposed to go to $1. I do want to keep that line. I learned at my last Chiefs Conference, New Hampshire is going to look at a state accreditation, which we will seek once they do that. So that's in the... the hopefully near future. And it'll be much cheaper than Kalia. By the way, state accreditations are usually much cheaper. Uh, police building maintenance, no change. Uh, evidence recovery storage, this was not funded. Uh, so again, we since before I've been there, we rent two storage bays, uh, evidence related. One of them we keep evidence in. Uh, for instance, the commercial burglary we had, we recovered a lot of evidence where we had to store it somewhere. We don't have the facility to store that in. Uh, we have one small room for evidence. Another thing, if we ever seize a vehicle, we have to have somewhere to put it where it's out of the weather in case we need to fingerprint it or what have you. So we have to keep one bay just open for anything. Of course, we can't block the bay in the police department because we have to use that to 
put prisoners in and out. So. Uh, police training, no change. Printing, no change. Dues, no change. Mileage reimbursement, no change. Rubbish removal. Uh, so they, we did have uh, a slight price increase. It was going to be a significant increase. We're going to a new company where it's just a little bit over. Um, they were going up almost $90 a month prior. Uh, I had the 780 in there. We're not that bad right now. I want to say it's going to be like a $200 increase, so I can change that if anybody really wants it. Um, obviously, we wouldn't spend it. It's contractual. Uh, police cleaning services, contractual, no change. Uh, we actually had a little bit more in there from what was contracted, so I removed the 350 Building janitorial supplies. Uh, I just split this with another line that was at 4,000 previously just for better accountability and transparency. So even though it's a, a new line, there's no change to it. Police supplies, uh, no change. It's $8,000 just to let you know about 4,000 was just on ammunition. So this doesn't go very far. And you know, with projected shortages, I'm sure ammunition is gonna keep going. It's just gonna, you know, we're not asking for an increase, uh, but it does take a lot. Taser equipment, not previously funded. Like I said, tasers and body-worn cameras have never been in my budget. This is just to get them in my budget. Um, this is essentially for the equipment that we have to use to annually qualify plus replace the banner batteries on uh, annually. There's a separate line for the actual tasers themselves where we would, uh, through life cycle management, purchase three a year, which is right here. Um, when we keep tasers under five years, which Axon clearly states is their life cycle, they clearly state tasers are like two times as likely to fail after five years. So if we use them after five years, it puts a big liability on the department and they provide $10 million insurance as long as we keep them under five years. We were just, we just had multiple, which were 11, 10 years. Oh yeah. 10 years old. Uh, I, as soon as I found that it took taser almost a year of research to find out how old these tasers were. Once we found them out, found out how they were, we took them off the street and uh, purchased some new ones through end of year purchasing. Just, just what we needed to, to get the officer's tasers. Uh, police radio maintenance contract, no change. Body worn cameras. Again, this is, uh, this wasn't funded. This is for the licensing and media storage for the body worn cameras, not the cameras themselves. That's a separate line, which I'll get ready to get into. So this is just pretty much contractual annual expenses. Uh, computer equipment, no change. Then those are just some of the programs that we use to through that. Uh, police, here's the other line for police body worn camera equipment, uh, not previously funded. So this will buy three cameras a year plus one docking bay because we buy our own equipment. We don't lease it. They have a separate program for that, but the board consistently wants me to purchase equipment rather than going through a leasing program, which is much more expensive. Uh, office equipment, furniture, no change. Office supplies, no change. This is the other line I'd mentioned. I split that other one with, it used to be 4,000. I just split them into two lines with 2,000 each. <coughs> IMC server maintenance, no change, but this will likely be going down, uh, probably next year. I'm just, it, I'm still not there yet. I, I always expect a bill because I don't know where they got that specific number. You know what I mean? So I, I'd rather have the money and wait. Um, photocopier services, uh, contractual. Uh, we actually had a little bit more in there, so we're reducing that by what we actually need. Police postage, no change. Uh, police fuel vehicles, this is set uh, based on projected uses and gas rates. So uh, this year it'll be set at $22,750. $22, uh, police sub safety medical gear, no change. Police vehicle repairs, no change. As well as police maintenance tires, no change. Uh, books updates, we did have to increase this because we do do our own prosecutor now. She's required to have a set of law manuals on hand uh we've still been waiting for the academy to send her to actual training but she's doing a phenomenal job uh she's referenced to other departments as an example frequently that's how good she's doing a lot of positive feedback by the job that officer perslow is doing um communications equipment uh reduction uh 
just looking to get one portable radio, radio annually. Uh, they, they have about a 15-year life cycle, so that's good. Are you caught up on those? Because you were behind yes, a couple no, years back. We're, we're, we're behind on car radios. Oh. Portable okay. radios we're good on. Okay. I'm confused too. Uh, defensive force equipment training, no change. Juvenile diversion project, no change. Uniform maintenance, dry cleaning, and this is contractual through the collective bargaining agreement, uh, no change. Uniforms equipment, uh, we're asking for an increase. And what this is, is to go into a life cycle management program with both rifles and handguns. Um, I'm picking up half of that cost in my current budget, and the other half is the increase, which is $2,000. And that'll provide, uh, we need five rifles, one for each frontline vehicle, so that'll provide one rifle every other year, and that'll allow us to transition new, new, new firearms every seven years. Police departments, law enforcement, typical life cycle of firearms are seven years. So that'll take care of that rather than me having to ask for end of year purchases. Uh, ballistic equipment, this is another big one. So my, my line has consistently been $1,760. That barely pays for one ballistic vest uh, without any trauma plates. They have a life cycle of five years. If I have 12 officers plus a couple part-time officers, 15 is what I use, three per year. When I do the math, it's not even covering what I need just to keep people in current vests. Um, so not, but it's not just vests. Uh, three vests a year is what I average, uh, is what I need to average. One shield for the car, uh, the front five front line vehicles. Again, everything ballistics, five year life cycle. Uh, trauma plates were actually a little more expensive than what I put on there, but that's fine. I'll pick that up on another line. Uh, we just got a quote for 650 per set of trauma plates. And what that does, that sets, stops up to 7.62 ammunition, which obviously we want. The current vests are just smaller caliber. They're 3A level, rated 3A. And then three helmets per year, which will give everybody their own helmet. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. So obviously this is a big difference in that line item. Mm -hmm. Is everybody just using outdated equipment now, or are you getting it from somewhere else? So we don't have, we just uh, we just got an end of year purchase for one ballistic shield. We have two that are current with, within the uh, five years, so we've got three instead of five. You know, we'll get back. We don't even need everything with us. Just we need to get on a system where we replace it, and we'll get back up to what we need. Everyone has a current uh, vest. We do not have any trauma plates. We just ordered three to start off with. Uh, helmets, we have eight, and we just ordered another six with the end of year purchase. So everybody will have a helmet. Everybody has a current vest. Three will have trauma plates, and what we'll do is we'll put those in the car, three of the car, three out of the five cars, and we have, we will have three shields. We have two shields now, and we, have, we will have three. But again, it's just getting in that life cycle management program, and we'll get there. Uh, uniform allowance, and this is by CBA. Each officer gets $500. No change. And that's it. Any questions on the police budget? Neil, come on up. Uh, a question and request, Chief. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. um, on line 421.2, Four twenty-one police storage. You have an, an additional thousand dollars, which you said with the files and so forth. Mm -hmm. Can you offset some of that by eliminating some of the New England storage space that you're currently renting? Is it so let me, let me look at the line. Uh, accounting know. line or row line? Uh, which line? Again? line. Four, four twenty. Uh, our lines are four twenty-one police record storage. I think it's line two thirty-eight. Yeah, yeah the, line two thirty-eight on the, in the bolded lines. Okay. 321. Let me see what you're doing. 321. Thank you. 321. 321 is your number. Yeah. I'm sorry, right. Neil, can I just have you repeat your question so I have it? Yeah. Um, the chief said that he was going to spend $1,000 on this line for additional files. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if some of that cost could be offset by reducing the amount of money that you're paying now for New England storage where you have a whole bunch of files. So this is New England storage. 
and could you explain it? Sure. So there? we have to, we have, uh, uh, well, there you go, approximately 80 boxes of records, which are stored at New England Document Storage. We get charged $75 a month anytime we go down there, which I'm getting ready to do for an AG of investigation to pull files. It costs us like a dollar for them to pull the box and a dollar for them to put it back. So sometimes I'm around $80 uh, for the month. But this pays for them to store those 80 boxes, which I don't have room to store for in my... Uh, so you're expanding the, the amount of storage in that facility? Correct. I didn't have, I ran out of, I had ran a room in my building, so about two years ago, okay. we had to go outside, and obviously the budget hasn't passed in two years, so I've been pulling this out of different lines. And, and now my request, could you, could you give the committee a list of your current budget lines where you have not spent the full amount, and all those lines to which some of that money was transferred for 2021? Off the top of my head? No. Just, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you could do it, but no, I'd like it on paper. Oh, uh, see, if, I'm, I'm sure Beth that, would have to do that. Well, Megan, I think you asked for that. I asked for that, yeah. You asked that earlier. At the beginning yeah, I'm, of the I'm right about where I'm supposed to be. In other words, your lines. With are, operational budget, overall. Like, some lines no, might no, be no, over, that, some might be but That's under. my point. I want to know where you're over and where mm -hmm. you're under. Okay, yeah, we'll have to get that to you. I'd ask for it. But now, obviously, when you see that, I'm not in life cycle management, so I'm not purchasing firearms and what have you, tasers and stuff like that, unless it wasn't approved with end of year. Make sense? No, but I'll... So my budget should be higher, and I would be purchasing more. I'm not able to purchase the equipment that the officers need. I can't purchase three body-worn cameras annually. I can't purchase three tasers annually. I can't purchase a, a rifle every two years. I can't purchase three firearms annually. Unless you take it from another account. I don't have another account. End of year purchasing and salary lines have been able to provide that. I don't have fluff in my budget where I can say, oh, I've got that extra. Let me go buy this, this, and this. I, I guess what I mean is over the past few years, you haven't sp we haven't been fully staffed. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of money in your salary lines that was not spent. Correct. Under this kind of a budget, you're able to take that money and use it for other things. And I'd like to see those kinds of things so we know where there's a shortage, where you're running over, where you're running under. And I, I, think, that, I think that is what Beth is going to provide yeah, I think to, that's me, that's what I asked. to all yeah. of us. Yeah. So, so we'll have for all. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Everybody else good? I, I have a quick Go. question. Go ahead. Um, of the current staff, you said you were fully staffed, correct? Yes, I am. Okay. We are. So, <laughs> for the staff that you currently have, mm -hmm. how many seasoned versus rookie officers do we have on? So, let's see. We just graduated Officer Gilmet. He's a rookie. Okay. He's the only rookie we really have. Okay. Um, we picked up Officer Valero from New Boston. He had about four years there. We picked up Officer George from Manchester. He had three years there. And before, I don't think that's, I think that's it this year for as far as new officers. We had Officer Weed, who was a new officer, but he didn't make it. Okay. So. So do we have, do you anticipate for the new officer who mm -hmm. just graduated mm -hmm. that salary to remain consistent for, through this year? Yeah, so he'll get, uh, once... It's already built into the budget, I believe, correct, Beth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he gets his CBA raise after probation. After probation. Okay. And he'll he'll be on probation for a while. So he's he's just started his field training, which is about sixteen weeks, and then he's on probation for six months after that, at which point he'll go So he rides with an FTO for correct. sixteen weeks? Mm hmm Okay. <clears throat> or until he can do the job. If okay. he finishes, if he's competent, he finishes a little early. But we don't push him. We want him comfortable okay. out there to make the good decisions. Um, we don't put any pressure on him as far as a timeline. Got it. We're not going to keep him forever. Yeah. But. Correct. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Can someone remind me, end of year purchasing, is that because we're under our budget and we have extra money to spend? So I had uh, 138000 this year, but it was through my salary line. Okay. Uh, because we were understaffed. Yeah. Okay. So my operational budget I had expended, and I was still short tasers, a lot of tasers, 
based on their how once we find out how old they were. Uh, firearms, we were due for a firearms transition, and I had zero patrol rifles. They were the four donated rifles that had been there a while, mismatched equipment. Uh, we really need to get it on a program. So we did. We, we're buying one currently. Are those serviced regularly or? Defiant serviced. Are they inspected? And yes. So we have a, a firearms instructor who's Sergeant Frisbee. He goes to additional training. Uh, when we go to shoot, we clean them as a group. Uh, he inspects them. We report them. Obviously, when we're shooting them, if we have any problems, we report them to him and he gives them fixed. We usually keep one or two spare weapons. In case we get in a shooting, that <laughs> firearm has to come off of the street and that'll be off the street for a while and then if anything has to go back to the manufacturer which also has happened we need something to be able to give to the officer okay got it thank you mm -hmm. very good animal control budget <coughs> so we haven't really just to let you know we haven't been pushing for an ACO just because we've had multiple officers in field training we only have so many field so many field training instructors once officer uh, Valero I'm sorry officer George uh, finishes his field training which will four to six week range we'll just have officer Gilmet in it we'll start our process of actually looking for an ACO um, Again, I didn't go over salary lines. These are just operational expenses. Uh, no change in professional services. A reduction in electricity. Of course, we're not using the kennel because it's unserviceable. Keeping the line open, but it's just a dollar. Uh, meeting seminars, uh, no change. Supplies, uh, reduced it by $42, we have most everything we need for the ACO. It's just a matter of replacing uh, what we use. Uh, fuel vehicle, uh, this is in our, actually I believe in our police department fuel line, correct? Which is why it really doesn't have its own line. Oh. It's at zero right now, I just noticed this is zero. Yeah, we're proposing a line. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, based on how many animal calls we get, I was just, probably one tank of gas once we have an ACO and they start driving a month. Uh, safety, medical gear, no change. Just maintain the existing inventory. We have most equipment we need for that position. Vehicle maintenance repairs, uh, $1,000 a year, so no change. Shelter maintenance, uh, it's closed, so just proposing it go down to a dollar reduction. And that's it. Anybody have any questions on ACO? I don't think so. All right, great. Any warrant articles? Yes, so just one vehicle. Uh, same as last year, except we're not including the year. The same as what was on CIP? Has anything, something changed? Yeah, uh, it's a little bit more just because I didn't have the computer in the car last year. It's in the car this year. Uh, once we actually got the to Tahoe, we saw it doesn't come with a spotlight anymore, which was new to us. So we had to put a spotlight on it. If we put the traditional spotlight in the frame, it voids the warranty. So we couldn't do that, which increases the cost by $500 to put the periscope in. So a thousand dollar spotlight. And then, uh, the other thing was an external antenna and hotspot, which has increased the reception of the computer in the car. So that was a very, it was a very positive improvement we made to the vehicle which also was approved by the board as an end of your purchase to get the dodges with that same upgrade so it's going to be about like 72 and change because it originally was 71 just under 71 or so, um, just under 72 right there includes, oh so this is last year oh he was referencing last year got it so right it's the same as it was on here mm -hmm. my bad Keep up. <laughs> I'm slow. but we didn't put the year because we don't know what the supply is going to be like uh i did see under the state bids one dealership which has the same price of the Tahoe as last year, was it 180 days? The other dealership, which was $8,000 more, was 360 days. So we know who's going to get the state bed, the one who stayed with the same price. Do, we, do, we, do you care what year it is? is it well, if I almost didn't get one. So I know how some are sticklers. So I had a warrant article for a 2022 Chevy Tahoe. 
by the time it was approved and I could go purchase it, we had to go to Connecticut, and there were only oh, 12 left. Is that the whole Because if I had to buy a 2023 20, Tahoe, I'm sure I would have got yelled at. Just this way, he can, if it doesn't get here in 22, he can still purchase a 23. Correct. It's going to be a new Tahoe, whatever year that may be. Right. Fair enough. Might be waiting for a chip. Could be. <laughs> All right. Well, thank well, you. Got. Time. Thank you. Uh, Bill has a question. Yes, sir. Just to, just to clarify again on the, on the, new, uh, the new cruiser. I think I asked the same question, but what I heard last time you were, you were here, Chief, it'll come in, it'll go in the patrol. If mm -hmm. that's what you want, you want the towel, but you're going to take one of the patrol vehicles and mm -hmm. ghost it. Mm -hmm. So basically, you'll still have the same number of patrol vehicles, but one, uh, it'll be in a, one of them will be an additional towel. So what you're really adding is an administrative vehicle. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. So, what has been the impact for this year of not having a second administrative vehicle? So, this year minimal because we were not staffed fully. But Next still, year. But you're still going to have the same number of online patrol vehicles. Correct. But if we have to take the frontline vehicles to Manchester to pick up records, to go to the lab, that's right. that's to go to court. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. You're doing that this year with the current vehicle in there. Correct, because we didn't have as many people working. And what's, but if we're fully staffed, those cars are going to be out on the street and not available for us to go to training or what have you. Vehicles that are on patrol at any given, at any given shift? Say that one more I'm sorry. You're gonna, you're, therefore, you're going to have an increased number of vehicles on patrol on any given shift? Particular shifts, yes. There will be particular shifts where we won't have enough cars for every individual officer and they'll double up, but that's fine. Five, five frontline vehicles and two administrative vehicles is what I need to run my department with 12 officers. Well, that's my question. Yes. And you've, been doing it, you've been doing that this year without that. But yeah, with no problem because I haven't had 12. So if you lose an officer along the way, then... Don't jinx us. I just got fully <laughs> staffed. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Uh -huh. okay. But moving, moving forward this year, you're fully staffed. You potentially won't get your vehicle till late 22 or 23 Correct. so you're you're still in the same boat oh yeah staff. no it is what it is yeah. right but it's not a place we want to be we want to be full fully full vehicles and full staff but, you know, that, that's why I'm asking you know, you know de devil's advocate we go out and we wreck to right you know there's black ice this morning we're responding to a call and two of them go in the ditch now what we do. <laughs> they, don't, they don't cover 114, though. No, they don't. I'll go on record again. That's a state <laughs> for anybody listening. <coughs> Excuse me. Someone always complaining. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Naomi, do you uh, what's uh, what do you do? You want to go through highlights of the town? Was that? Or do you want to bet through that, or um, or do you want to do Ben? Benji yeah, the sorry. Sorry, not feeling good, Benji. The phone will ring if it gets too hot. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't have that little thing, so. <laughs> All right, so you guys have both um, the summary and the detail. We'll start on page eight. I'll try to walk you down through Benji's. I'm really going to only do the big numbers. Um, because $500 here or 360 there is not in the grand scheme of things, I don't think. You know, it's part of running the town. But I'm going to go to, I'm going to, I'm not, his would start same place everybody else would be at telephone, which is line uh, 392, left hand side. But your biggest one you're going to come to is vehicle fuel, which we all see it and we all pay for it. On page uh, eight, for anybody that's wondering, eight of the and packet. so vehicle fuel has got an increase of twenty three thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars in twenty twenty one, and it's always a uh, crapshoot. I'll call it because nobody will give you a fixed price because it's so volatile up and down. So we did our best in twenty twenty one, and we did okay. We used uh, $2.35 a gallon for unleaded and $2.80 in a gallon for diesel. This year, we're going to estimate and keep our fingers crossed, but if you go by the gas bump, you've already seen that we've exceeded it. 
Um, we set the rates at $3.25 for unleaded and diesel. Now, mind you, we don't pay the tax, so it's about 40 cents off, but by the end of we get the $4 mark, it's really going to hurt. So that's where the $23,875 um, comes into play. Um, you can go down through, and as you all know, additives and testing, you all have your own vehicles. There's a lot of things. Oils and lubricants have gone up. Um, guardrails is his next big item. We've tried to put guardrails in there for a couple of years now, and based on default, we don't get it. So you see when someone goes off the road and it's all... The guardrail's that's, that's gone. We do our best to try to get someone to pay for that, but it sometimes doesn't work that way. Can you remind me where he normally takes the money for the guardrails from? I don't know that we've done guardrail, have we? Not recently. We haven't done any guardrail. That's why if you've come across some bent up ones, okay, that's why. Okay, I thought that it was in, I thought from last year, it was in another line, wasn't it? it? it and he was. was moving it? What was that? It was. He was going to, yeah, he, he was creating his own line. Yeah. For it. I, but he wasn't reducing the other line, So, right? yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, I okay, we've I tried remember. we've tried a couple times now for guardrails okay. and it just hasn't been successful. Okay. Um, it's not really a road? it's not really a road reconstruction well, thing either. That's kind of um, fold, because it's usually yeah. 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 Okay. So that's why we'd like to do that. Um, I'm gonna go up one more. Uh, it says one time purchase and I believe the one time purchase is for the paint yeah. for a palette of paint for the paint machine and we do it one time because it's cheaper to buy the pallet, believe it or not, and for the paint striper machine. Um, drop you down a little bit further to gravel road maintenance at $12,200 increase. Again, we're going to try once more. We're going to try to see if we can get the calcium chloride in the operating budget. I think we do snitch that out of road reconstruction, but it really belongs in here. I mean. 12000 it's an increase of $12,200. Um, I'll drop you down to the salt and sand, $57,800 increase. Last year, salt was forty nine fifty a ton. This year, it's seventy two sixty. So think about how many times you've been out on the ice. Christmas today, if you were so lucky, and other things. So we're using an awful lot of salt. So that's something that we can't do. I mean, we have to do the salt. Um, so, and, and we have to pay it or else we don't put salt out. So that's a big increase. The other ones on the next page, um, $11,000 were decreasing because we bought a roadside more a couple years ago. And then I'm gonna drop you down to the knotweed control of $7,200. This is that Japanese knotweed that's on the side of the road that's really nasty to try to cut back and clip. So we, had, we have a service that comes in and does it for us. Um, again, we tried to put it in the operating budget. We still have it done, but it really belongs in, <coughs> as part of the operation. So that's where we end up at 132,339 proposed versus default difference. Um, so just a couple questions. Um. Ask. What? <laughs> Ask Randy. <laughs> Well, he can't answer me back. She's, she's got him right there. <laughs> um, I, I'm just going to the to the salaries. Um, sure. So the, the director salary, um, Benji. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Benji hasn't. We've been trying to get him a raise for about. We've given three him a raise, years. but you we have. found it somewhere else. Okay. So so is this to make up for the raise you already gave him? No, nope, this, this is to actually make it correct. This is going. You're going to see other lines that are the same problem, yeah. because we've we've distributed increases mm. to keep the staff that we have understand so so I'm just saying you're gonna see it more often he is and did receive an increase and but and he still gets paid his salary it's just not been reflective in oh, the proposed <clears throat> okay uh, and then in terms of same thing with the the, the part-time driver and the part-time assistant uh, part-time driver we added was it a Warren Arkell last yeah. year we added the Warren article last year for part time. Oh, I forgot all about that. We didn't do the whole year. So oh. this is to do, um, we only did it for part of the year. So now you're going to see a full year. Okay, that makes Sir, sense. Last year, I tried to find all my stuff tonight before we came. <laughs> last year, didn't we get something that showed like what the increase in the budget was from the Warren articles that had been imp approved last year? You know what I mean? Like, they, 
So like this increase of $12,000, so we're looking at the bottom line, we know, okay, this, this is the increase, however, like say 50,000 or whatever it is, this came from warrant articles that were passed by yeah, for the, the town. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not one of these though. Yeah. No, I know what that she's talking helpful. about. That yes. was really it's helpful the, last year. It's, mm -hmm. Yes, it's got a dollar to each value. Yeah, yes. you're right. Yeah. She's gonna look for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My right hand girl, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Article, what it cost in the current year and then what it was going to cost going forward for a full year? Yeah, correct. So what, so what the warrant article was approved at, I think was what we were given, and then it was like, it was saying this is the increase that you're seeing in the budget for 2022, and this is the amount that was due to approved warrant articles. So then we could see, okay, this is the amount oh. that's actually being asked for that's yes. new. I think it's this one. Okay. I can find what that little blurb on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm that's talking about. Awesome. She's gonna go send it to the printer. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive, so she'll get that. So um anything else on public that's just works? the highway yeah. we can continue yeah. on um the transfer station while you're actually between highway street lighting we're proposing to go down to 5,000 versus 5,400 based on what we use because i think the one street light that we have is no longer working <laughs> i don't know it's just just I think we had two <laughs> Never knew that. most people would think they're no, no, kidding if they're, if they don't know us there was one down in uh, riverdale down at the corner of Riverdale and North Riverdale. Ah, yeah. I don't like this one down there. That <laughs> quiet. Yeah, only in winter. <laughs> Woodchuck shot it out. No. Oh. Scavenger hunt for the, the town. <laughs> um, so then we can move on to the transfer station if you like. Um, uh, and the part-time wages. Um, again, we had an article to have part-time help. Um, I'll take you down to. You see the asterisks with 2022, um, those are contracts that we have signed to um, haul the trash and they're going to expire in 2022. So is that what all the dates are? Yeah, so the, uh, the asterisk re represents contract and the date in the parentheses represents when it expires. Got it. Okay. So the net difference is what you anticipate the increase is going to be at when the contract expires? Is my so what we're going to do is, no, so in 2022 it should cost you 29380 but because we didn't pass a budget, you only have 27584 So that's why there's an increase. Yep. Okay. Right? Yeah, the ones with the asterisks means that the Board of Selectmen have entered into a contract, but the voters haven't approved it yet. Right. Okay. So you'll see a parenthesis without the asterisk means the voters haven't approved it. Yeah. Oh, all right. That makes so sense. So I can keep track of what you approve. <laughs> we don't approve anything. We just recommend. So wheel abrator is up 27250 and that's basically um, your tonnage that gets hauled away in your household trash. We're anticipating, obviously, the town's not getting any smaller, but we're anticipating um, the wheel abrator. And I think wheel abrator gives us that number, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, they do not. It's, it's, they give us the tonnage and depending on how many loads we Let's guess on how much we've been taking. Um, so you can see the metals as we talked about the contract and the um, fuel surcharge um, when we put it out to bid three years ago they were trying at their best guess what fuel would be and the weight um, so if it goes above I can't remember the dollar amount per uh, for fuel we get charged a difference um, and if they have to wait because they get to wheel abrator or wherever they're going and there's 10 trucks ahead of them We have to pay for that weight. We try to not do that, but you know things happen And then I think um, uh, three thousand dollars down at the very bottom is um, Hazardous waste day seems to just fly right by and only take a short amount of time So we're hoping to up the money to get rid of more of the hazardous materials and have enough money for a waste day, you know, seven thousand dollars doesn't take long to spend very quickly on hazardous waste. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought he was doing wanted to do it for really a longer day or a, a two uh, days. I think didn't we he? tried to do one day, but days. we ran out of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think it's the way he originally presented yeah, two it days, two, two days, days ago. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's two days we can. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he's looking at fifty thousand three hundred fifty-eight dollars for an increase. In just that. He also is in charge of sewer and water. They're smaller ones as you continue on. Um, good share of the sewer is electricity. And then to pump the tanks. Then you got some mowing money. But that's $3,727 increase. Then on the flip side, if you go to the water, he's reducing $848. That's your bottom line. It's right behind the other ones. Just before animal control. Okay. And just so he does have some warrant articles, keep on the same path that you've done everybody else with. Um, we're looking to start a special revenue fund for the transfer station. <clears throat> we're going to adopt RSA 9134. Uh, excuse me, 3195 C to restrict 50% of the recyclable revenues to expenses for the purpose of transfer station equipment and capital projects. And then there's a whole other verbiage that says such revenues shall be accounted for in a special fund to be known as transfer station recyclable special revenue fund separate from the general fund. Any surplus shall not be deemed part of the general fund accumulated surplus and shall be expended only after a vote by the legislative body to appropriate a specific amount from the said fund for a specific purpose related to the purpose of the fund. This is all wording the DRA provides us. So oh boy. the first two lines is all you really needed to hear for now. Then you're also, you've heard from him before, CIP, 10 wheel dump truck, 260. It didn't fit pass last year. Was 230 last year. Now it's 30,000 more. He's in the same boat as Chief Moore and anybody that's going to buy anything. Is we have no idea. It's at least a year out. So if he gets it approved, it's going to be a year out anyway for the chassis and the body. Then the other article he has is a um, I'll call it medium duty, large one ton, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's going to be replacing the last of his one tons, and that's for 135,000. Um, How much was the, the new truck? 260. 260, thank you. 10 wheeler. That was a dump okay. truck. Do we have two small plow trucks? Because didn't we purchase one last year? We purchased one last year, but Benji has a GMC regular pickup. Then we have the one ton, which had a little bit of a fire the last time, but that's okay. That's the one we're replacing. That's the one that needed spindles when we were there, too. <laughs> just, just saying. Um, when we were talking to Benji, um, I thought he would mention something about getting funding. I don't know whether it was COVID funding or something for one of the trucks. And I... Well, I'm just... So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, we haven't talked about funding sources. Okay. Um, I know the, the, the wishes, too. But how do we play that out to not be confusing? We have to have a bigger discussion, I think, than this. Okay. Um, but the selectmen are meeting Monday night to largely finish up the radio because I need more numbers and to finalize kind of where funding will come from. Because you run into no means no, so you couldn't order one in 21. But my question is, does 21 go all the way to town meeting again? So I can't really purchase order. <coughs> one out of the ARPA money because if no means no I don't there's a lot of missing there's a lot of things that we don't know would we like to see him get two sure but I don't know that you'll see two on the ballot you know because now it's going to be such a long wait so it's actually gonna be a whole nother winter he's gonna go without a truck but yeah. we're strong we're survivors We've survived good all these years. <clears throat> Howdy, New Englanders. Um, next article is road reconstruction. As you recall, he bumped that to 575. Last year it was 525. Um, it's not getting any cheaper to do any road construction because a lot of the material that you need has a lot of the extra. The diesel fuel's gone up. All the other fuels go up that go into the pavement. Did you say 545? Five? He's going to 575. 575. And then we anticipate sure. getting 280, 280,900 from the state. So you're looking at about 294,000 from taxation. Is 
That's Benji. Did I do okay? <laughs> Benji, that all set? A <laughs> question? Sure. Uh, Beth, the uh, road preservation bond, is that all used up? Uh, we still have a little left in it, but not enough to do it. Okay, thanks. So I have a question with regards to um, the revenue from recycling. Um, so my understanding is that the recycling was shut down during the pandemic. However, prior to the pandemic, Recycling brought in $98,000 to the town. Um, and without that revenue, which I don't see reflected anywhere, my question is, I, I believe that there's a law that required mandatory recycling. And if the bay's already established, when are we gonna restart that and that revenue? I believe we're back to recycling, because since- Everything but plastic. Everything, everything but plastic, plastic. sorry. And everything but- and so is that something that would provide, um, and then this is more of a discussion in terms of um, maybe uh, my, my thought is the middle school is looking at a community service program where there perhaps are students that are willing and able to provide that support for the transfer station to perhaps manage those bays that are already established. And based on pricing and market conditions, my understanding is that the price difference based on the pandemic or Recyclables has gone from $42 a ton to $155 a ton based on the prices received from the town of Derry and Lebanon. And the ex capital expenditures for Derry were based on creating the bays that Ware already has established. And so if we're looking at a cap X for recyclables without the revenue coming in and then warrant articles to purchase trucks with the lost revenue of 98,000 that hasn't been reset when is that you know when are those figures going to come through and this may be a discussion more towards funding sources maybe um but thinking about well so then if we're going to take 50 percent we would be taking 50 percent out of what goes into the general fund of your number of 98. so that would set up this warrant article and so it would not be going into the general fund gotcha. as far as the kids and all that that needs to be a bigger conversation <laughs> probably with the director <laughs> you know because i don't know what happens what age of kids and the liability and things, yeah right. i was I'm just gonna say like not gonna answer that one because I don't want to see some kid in the hopper because they had a fight, you know? <laughs> you it's know, just not going there. One of the discussions we had when we did the tour down there is Benji was talking about the safety in the, in the layout alone. Even though we have it set up, it's really not safe. And on any given Saturday, there's probably five people that just about get hit because people are worried about the recycles, not paying attention to the, the way it's set up. Um, I think in theory, I think it's great, but... Yeah, just want to acknowledge this. Dollars, like yeah. 98000 prior to the pandemic to not have that coming in. That's a number that that is. But I think we might be getting some of that. I think that's what Benji's going to have to answer because the only thing we're not doing now is plastic. And I know that we got income from corrugated um, cardboard. cardboard. Um, and we shall, certainly will get it from the metal products, aluminum in particular, and then steel. Papers right? up. Papers and, up. And I thought that oh, part and of if, Right, Sorry so we're getting. But I thought that part of the reason we weren't doing plastic is we couldn't find anybody, and we weren't getting anything for it. We were actually right. paying. Correct. Right. That's what Benji had confirmed. Mm -hmm. By the time you haul it. So yeah, we're going to pay. I think the plastic is more about like feeling bad about not recycling plastic. We're going to pay either way for the plastic is what it sounded like. Yeah. So just, um, and they do a great job with recycling. You'll see we hold a lot of bales of cardboard. When cardboard's way down, we're not going to send it to have a negative. So he hangs on to it until it becomes a little bit more, because there is a cost to haul it, and you don't want to go the other way. Just so you know, the revenues this year, they're back up there. We were brought in about 84000 Yeah. As far as the volunteering thing for uh, younger people, it had to be 18 to even get near the machinery. We just, uh, you know. Well, there may be something they can do behind the scenes. I don't want to discourage anybody. Yeah, I'm I'm cardboard, I yeah. I just want to be careful too because I don't want to be sitting here when something happens. So mm. you could just say yes and Benji will have to deal with it later. No. <laughs> Benji and I work well together. We're not, we're not gonna jeopardize that. So I don't know if you want to go down through um, you guys have had this. The town is really a small mm -hmm. portion of it. Um, you know, you can go down through Can you do highlights? I mean um, major changes? 
Well, so we have a little bit of a staffing model change, which is what I was trying to get. I don't know that my point got that way. So there's, um, in 2021, we had a full-time land use person, a part-time building inspector, a full-time assessing administrator, and a full-time tax collector. 21 was fun. Now we're gonna move to 22. So for 22, because I think I ended up playing three of those four, so we're going to move to 22, and I'm not complaining. I love every second of it. <laughs> so for 2022, we're not, we've, got, we've filled the full-time assessing administrator as of the 12-21. We have a part-time building inspector still that we filled in May. We have added a part-time zoning enforcement person as because we moved the tax collector to part-time, which that has not been filled yet. And we split the full-time land use between half-time with the building secretary and half-time as a land use assistant. So that's why none of these numbers are going to... Well, that explains why I was so confused everywhere. when I was right. reading it. And it goes to all the benefits that are included and things like that. So I just... Um, a lot you of it has repeat to... what you split again, that sure. last one? Um, so you did, you got the full-time assessing? Yes. Okay. Just the, what the last... The, full, the full-time is going to be split between the building department secretary and the land use assistant. Okay, thank you. So it does, you know, you're gonna go down and see numbers up, numbers down, all the way through it. Um, the elections, I believe they're up because we have three, three elections this year. Tax collector, you can go through and pick out, that's a negative because of the change. I mean, they're all negatives pretty much because of that department changed. <clears throat> Sessing, um, we are up five hundred dollars because we went from full time to full time. Possibly, uh, you know, um, the longevity was different because um, this is just starting. Legal expenses. We're gonna keep our fingers crossed and hope that we're gonna go to fifty six nine. I think we're doing pretty well. Our anticipation is to drop that. Finance department again. Um, our finance <coughs> department was presented with an increase. Again, it hasn't been approved by the town, but as far as the voting, but is still receiving what is on paper. Town clerk, pretty straightforward. Um, her biggest increase is postage, because we're doing a lot of uh, e regs I think, more than we were. Uh, selectman's office, we are up uh, $8,000 again. Another increase, well deserved. Just wasn't approved yet by any operating budget. Cable, there's no difference. Trustees, trust funds, no different. Land use is another one. We've talked about the change in the reorganization. It's got a decrease of 31,231. And the government buildings, if I'm going too fast, I'll call it. Government buildings, um, you're looking at a total increase of $11,894. A good share of it, largely, is to do with our new lawn care contract for the municipal properties that went up. We just put it out to bid. The selectmen have awarded it, but again, it needs to go into and be approved by a proposed budget. That just Same. go up an uh, inflationary increase, or was there more services? Just cause um, it included some more services. And then actually down in lawn care, we also got a new contract. You got an for lawn care? Yeah, you got to asterisk the lawn care. That was put out to bid. Um, so that's an $8,000 again. Um, it just hasn't been approved. Uh, cornerstones. Um, when you buy the four cornerstones, you know, we only budget for so many. Insurance is going down a total of $63,371. Why? Because we're getting good. <laughs> is that because we're getting sued less, seriously? So your insurance for your liability and property is down $97,000. But your workers' comp is up 31000 mm -hmm. So you're doing better on one side, but got a little on the other side. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, advertising and um, regional associations, your dues and your advertising, were are going to increase $7. And you've already heard from, actually you should have 
Emergency management, the fire chief is the emergency management director, but there's no change. The fire department. Code enforcement, that's another one of the um, changes. But if you look at the whole combination of how we've restructured, I think it makes sense to everybody. Um, you've got decreases in one and increases in another. That's why I wanted to give you the reorganization. Forest fires. Again, that was um, the largest increase there is a stipend for the forest fire warden that has been um, presented and, and, uh, and given to him. It's just not been in an approved budget yet. I already talked about highway. The street light. <laughs> Sorry. Is it good light? Light. <laughs> Health and welfare. Um, basically, I mean, it is what it is. We're down seventy dollars. Small things, mileage, fare, health fare, things like that. Um, welfare. We've actually done. I'll knock on wood very well. Um, we have a good welfare director. So, um, again, um, the biggest part of that is a uh, wage or uh, an increase that's not been vetted by a proposed budget. Parks and Rec, you heard from, library heard from, patriotic purposes, $500. That's for the cemetery mar markers. Conservation, I think, is decreasing, $831. And then everything else is. So our operating budget, as we've sent and proposed to you today, represents a $197,110 increase. Or 2.73% over the default. Did okay, so, I'm get one of these. so you all got one of these to figure out how we got default? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, somewhere. Any questions for Naomi? I'm a little confused why. And I, I don't think it's a bad thing. Why police fuel went down? He's, he's asking for 750 less, and highway fuel is going up 23 grand. Well, highways got. I, I get it. Vehicles, I, I get it. The, the vehicles, vehicles are of good. diesel that yeah. are out all winter. Yep. 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 Um, yeah. It, it's you can think it through, and it's there's no real good answer because okay. it's just what okay. it is. Um, and they do fire. have and fire fuels going up too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just find it odd that they went down. It's only 750, but nonetheless. It, I don't well, know. they do have a brand new Tahoe. Newer vehicles, better. And gas mileage. it's probably I can almost guarantee it's better gas mileage than those Dodges that they yeah. have. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Tahoe's still not great. They're still if you're say, yeah, they're, they're not, not terrible. Honestly, right. but, but the Tahoe. If you're lucky, it's 16, 16 miles to the gallon. It's not. He probably, I, if he was here, he'd probably say, "Look, it, it was more than what we were using, and I needed yeah. to put money somewhere else." Sure. Sure. My understanding with that, when uh, it was presented, is that the Tahoe, when it's idling, shifts from eight cylinders to four for fuel savings. I don't oh. think that would be the whole difference here, but. Yeah. Tom knows how that works. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Wow. On the uh, cruising. Not in mine. <laughs> <laughs> Took it out. Cruising, they do do that, but it's yeah. not good for them. No, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. I Over get it. It is a savings, but if it's a sizable difference, you probably just had more than what you really needed. I so control. I can briefly, I don't, I'm not, I don't have everything together for all the Warren articles, but if you want, I can just touch upon what we're looking at. You've heard from mm -hmm. almost all of them is you're going to see an increase uh, non-union raises of 3%, which is $62,377. Two, you heard from that, you heard from that. <clears throat> that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, Jesus. And the next one you heard at CIP is the $20,000 for a master plan update, which is step one of three. Um, they were going to do it in three increments because our current master plan is a 2005, so it's 16 going on 17 years old. Um, I, it's my understanding that they're not going to wait for three years. They're going to do what they can do each year, but they didn't want to throw $60,000 at it at once 
because nobody can do all that at once. Um, then there is one for the radio communication lease, but that's a really complicated one at the moment, so I'm not going to go there. Then you're going to see the traditional uh, warrant article for the forester for $30,000 to come out of the town forest money. You are not going to see one for to buy land. Um, and then basically there's a, an article um, for town-owned property to be conservation land. And then there's an article for an all-veterans tax credit because we don't have that. We have a specific service times. So the all-service um, opens it up a little bit more. How much will that cost? I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, it, they would be is issued the same credit that the other ones do, the $500. Um, we've run into it maybe twice when the people apply. I don't know how many is out there. So. And that's what I'm looking at. Okay. So um, in terms of schedules, uh, you said on Monday, you expect to have all the decision? I have to finalize decision. Monday, yeah. So um, that would be really, I mean, I could then give you or send you the warrant. Yeah. I know you're meeting with the school board on the 19th. But the only article you honestly haven't heard would be however we put together the communication one. Um, so, and uh, Neil asked a question at one point, and I think Megan asked a question similar as far as like if we got follow up questions and things like that. So, I, I, I think I want to just have a quick conversation. Um, it, it, assuming you're done on Monday, if we can get the electronic form to the, to the committee members, yeah. then. Um, can we, if we need to get a department back for quick questions on that day, is that possible? Does that sound like on the nineteenth? On the nineteenth, yeah. It, I mean, I didn't want to. I mean, I don't know I that that's going to happen. I had expectation of being done, but I know. you know, I w I did the best. Um, we still got too many missing, too many moving parts for me to stand here and tell you what we're doing. Yeah, and I, I and it's not a hidden secret. We talked in length about it Monday <clears throat> night. If you want to go to YouTube, I watched the meeting. Yeah, it's it, there's too many moving parts right now to iron it out. Yeah, and again, it's, so it's it's not really a complaint. It's really just for us to be prepared. Yeah. If we got people that are sure. uncomfortable, have I mean, I, I can have whoever you like back on the nineteenth. I don't want to take up all of their time. Though. I understood. You know what I mean? You guys set out the two meetings specifically for town and school. I'm happy to come back because I'm gonna be here anyway. If it's really a necessity, it depends on what the committee members think. Then we might have to have a you know separate yeah. short meeting. And that's fine too. And and so what I'm proposing to the to the committee members here is if we have to, and there's really serious conversations we need to have and questions, and that's what we got to do to get the answers. So let's see what it looks like. Tom, what will we be doing on the 19th? 19th is the school. school. The schools will they'll be finalized. It will be because I have the date somewhere. It'll be after their public session. Part of that I got to go back and look at. Sorry, I'm switching gears so their here. So public hearings are the 12th of January and the 14th of January. That's what I have. And then we're going to meet with them on the 19th. Yes, I think that's what you had said before. Yes. And Tom, when were you thinking that we would actually uh, make some decisions? Well, that's what I was going to. <laughs> it's a good question because uh, in the notes that um, that Bill had taken. We had he had noted when January nineteenth is we were going to have budget deliberations, and so I was gonna yeah. I was gonna bring that up like to see if I missed something so we could just have a, no 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 that I missed something okay so schools so then we gotta we gotta look at the calendar from there I don't the answer is I don't I don't know I, yet I think Megan um, did you have the public hearings down too because public so, hearings things can be talked about and changed so so ours hearing, is the seventeenth yeah. Um, I, don't, I probably I have it. Somewhere. Bill actually put <laughs> in the notes, which I have here. So, which one are you looking to understand? The Ware School Board. Um, the Ware School Board is the, the 9th. 12th. Oh. Oh, is it the 12th? Okay. Okay. I so have the 12th. All right. All right. So we'll need to get this corrected then. Okay, okay, okay. Let me go to my calendar then. Let me go verify to that. That's what I wrote down at the last meeting. I'm gonna cross reference right now because I had a calendar in front of me. Uh, okay. So yeah, we're we're deliberative. It's the 12th. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? I'm in the wrong month. That's great. Um, yeah, the 12th I have for where as well. I wrote that on our last meeting, and then the 14th was Stark. The public hearings. Public hearings on where school. Yeah. So yeah, where schools the 12th, and so that has what you have, right? Yep. And then the 14th is Stark. 
And so. And we're the 17th. We're the 17th. That's why I think you picked the 19th. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Stark was what? The 14th? The 14th, yeah. Okay. Friday night. Oh, it's Friday, Friday night. Yeah. It's a party. And the town was the 17th? Yeah, <laughs> okay, so for the 19th, because I don't know, and, and forgive me, um, did, did we did we tell the schools that we wanted them to come back on the 19th yet? I don't know. That we, we had did. that discussion while they were here. Did they? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. That's I what think. happens when I take a two-week vacation. I can double. I off. will double check with Jackie, but <laughs> that's I'm, why I'm asking because okay. 99% sure we decided on that date last meeting while they were here okay. but i will email jackie to verify okay so i think we're, you know we're all, i think we're good for with the town stuff for now because we're gonna wait to see what we get there um we're gonna meet right after the public the expense one and you get that for Can I ask a question? Um, and this is where I'm not sure specific to in terms of like the vehicle models for like the Tahoe and then the ambulance. Is there a, uh, I guess, a point where we're looking at perhaps uh, diversifying based on commodity shifts and prices such as fossil fuels, gasoline, looking at electric vehicles, hybrids to reduce the costs of, of some of these? Uh, we haven't talked about that. We haven't, we haven't at all talked about it. I don't think it would work in our town because of our square, our square miles, that they don't go. That's my impression, but yeah, I'm thinking that's for them like to decide. I don't, know much about it. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever heard a conversation about going green yet for the town, and I, I think it's, I think every every town's going to eventually go through it, but I don't know I've ever heard it here. Yeah. Emergency vehicles, um, I know from being um, part of larger departments on the West Coast, are not an option. They're just not feasible sure. for sure. fire, medical, police, yep. unless you're in, like, uh, the South or Southwest, mm -hmm. where it's flat and highway. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors. Yeah. The batteries and the cold affects yeah. the battery life yeah. and just... Yeah. But I think it's, I think, you know, I'll go on record and say, I think the town should be having a, a green conversation, mm -hmm. without a doubt. We do what I do with my company, as we all, I all agree. a lot of us do. Yeah. Um, so Can I, I ask a question yeah. before we get to the, um, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, have my notes of like things that we normally get. So we normally get like what the town or someone normally asks. I think it's Matt who normally asks, and Matt's not at the board anymore. Like how much money the town has in surplus and that's going to go back to the, to the town. Um, as well as because of the new assessments that everyone got. What is what are we basing for? And this might be a finance committee t discussion. What are we basing the average home value on? It used to be two hundred fifty thousand, but I know for myself, like my house went up a hundred k. What are we going to base that on? So that like I can do that spreadsheet that we normally do. Right. That's a good question. That's a good question. Do we? Ha what is the average now? Well, let's. I, I'd like to see if the town can answer that first, Neil, if you don't mind. Do you know that now, or is that something you can get for us? The average price. The average home value. That's something that we would need. Yeah. No, it's a good I question. I'm glad. I wish I thought of it. <laughs> good, Neil. That's a very good question, but you need to specify what average you're talking about. Because the assessing company has an average for business properties or lake properties, um, and they have a whole bunch of different things. So if you just ask for an average, it's going to include everything. Yeah. But if you just want houses, You've got to make it clear that you just want house prices, not the the average house price, not the average price of a property and where. Well, that and that's what we based it on before. It's been two hundred fifty thousand of a house average, price. So I would think that Naomi residential would be, average she's a pretty intelligent residential. lady. She would know that that's what I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. It, it seems like you could state it as X number of dollars for every $100,000 of value because it is going to be all over the place. 
Um, I know, but I think in the past we have put, like... 250 has been a number yeah. used for a long time. Oh, it's been a very long time. I remember an example the other day because Chris was using that. I, I think it was... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still going up to 50. I think, yeah. I think 300 grand would be a better. I think that's a... Yeah. I, would even think, I was even thinking 350. When I, when I did yeah, the article on the... Uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, like, I'm thinking about my house. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I like to hear you said. Yeah, I, when I did the article for the newspaper on when the tax rate was set. I used three hundred thousand as a an estimate. This is what it would cost a three hundred thousand dollar house sure. with taxes based on the new tax rate. It was arbitrary, but it seemed like <clears throat> two hundred and fifty would was, was uh, yeah, non, it's not non starter nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't Even know that we three hundred thousand. I don't know if it's a starter. Yeah, I don't know that we put weight to it in the couple of years I've been here, but it seems appropriate to, to use a more number. accurate number. Yeah, it, it's a number that we do if, talk about. And yeah. to your point on the hundred thousand, I think you could do that easily, but I think one thing that I've learned here is like consistency from year to year seems to help not just myself but the public, and so I, I personally would prefer to use the average home value for those reasons. Confuse people less, hopefully. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Oh, confuse me less. Okay, so that was one. You had <laughs> two. Oh, she had two. That was two. I think I I I wrote them down, so I wouldn't forget. So I think I'm good now. Good I've asked it for enough. <laughs> Any movement on a motion to get a full-time uh, building inspector? Hold on, Neil's asking something. You stay part-time. Neil, Neil, Neil. We, if we could just keep one conversation, because I can't follow two for sure. <laughs> so. Um, Let's let Jeff go, and then cause I'd I like just, to hear the answer had, to whatever your question was. Honestly, I just had a quick question to see if there was any movement on getting a full-time building inspector through the through the town. And my reply, twenty-two is no. <laughs> <laughs> just to let you know, no, we are, we we didn't talk about full-time. We got a part-time zoning enforcement officer that's working close to the building inspector. They're both. One's thirty hours a week, one's twenty hours a week. So I think we're going to get more than forty hours. So they they duplicate. They can each do each other's. Not yet. Okay. That's my hope. Oh, okay. That's the plan. Yep. A little training. I'm gonna have all sponges in this building. So they're all gonna know what everybody does. <laughs> so in case something happens. That works. Neil. <laughs> you do ask good questions, but I think I, I do want to hear them. Um, thank you, Tom. Naomi, could you get us uh, some sort of a chart which explained? the personnel switches that you talked about, like what we didn't have, what we had in 2020, what happened in 2021 and where we are now in 20, 2022 with the part-time tax collector and the, all of these other positions so we can follow that. Yeah, she already had it done. <laughs> and then did you ask something about you wanted 10 years of something? <coughs> Was he asking something about he wanted 10 years of something? Oh, 10 years of um, tax budget. He wants 10 years of compact budget. Just I'm just trying to make, because I heard something and I wanted to make sure I was understanding. Okay. Okay. Too good with the town? Till the 19th. Till the 19th. Well, anyway. well, well, we're going to have to come up with a plan on what we're going to do. I mean, I, but I don't want to, I have nothing else. I don't think we have anything to ask you. Now we've got to figure out what's, our, what's a good plan for us. Uh, and I know, I think, I know we talked about scheduling at the end, but it probably makes sense to do it now and figure out what the, the plan should be for the town because, you know, that's the core of our discussions usually. And so if we're going to have questions, that's what it's going to lay after we get stuff from Naomi. So every trip I have has pretty much got canceled because of COVID, so everything has changed. So my availability has changed dramatically. Um, if we're here on the 19th, let's just work backwards. The deliberative is on the 12th. Um, the mailers typically need to be done the week before. I know we stretched that longer and we won't do that to you. Not before the delivery. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's, it's, it's after that. Right, I'm sorry. You'll have to have your comments. It's been AKA I'm sorry. The blurbs need to be typically get to you how many days before deliberative? I mean, I've printed the morning of or the afternoon of. I, mean, okay. I think our goal last year was Tuesday, was Tuesday, right? I just want to put some to get the, the blurbs well, back done. Back up, we're the last one. During the week, you've got Ware and John Stark, I think, and then us. All yeah, the no, I'm just, I'm just. So, no, you have to have your comments together so that you can make your handouts. 
for your first meeting. Yeah. So if we look at the week, the same it was all, pretty much the same schedule last week, last year. It was a Wednesday, it was a Friday, and it was a Saturday. And I'm pretty sure that we had the blurbs. Bill was wrapping them up. I'm pretty sure on the on the, the Thursday or the Friday yeah, before. And I just want to work yeah. backwards from here, build a little time, and then see what we have left for meetings. That's the, the way my head works. So if we, in an ideal world, we would have our blurbs done by Wednesday the 2nd. Mm -hmm. And that gives us, because, again, there were some last-minute changes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if our goal is, wow, I can't even spell it. Goal is the 2nd. Um, so that's two weeks from, so we've got two weeks between the schools and when we need the blurbs done. I'm assuming we would meet on the second. Then when did Naomi say she needed the, the blurbs for the deliberative? She said she could get them, the, we could get it the day before. Right, yeah, but so we. So typically, I mean, all, all we do is run them. All we do is run them through the You're talking, you're thinking about what she prints for the election. You no, know, I, I know I'm past that, but I remember. <laughs> No, I'm past. We I do remember that we the blurbs we were trying to get to the bef the week before, and that I if you guys want to get out of the wire, we have to. That's fine. But I do know that we were trying to get to them the week before. And I, I, honestly, it doesn't really matter to me as long as we get them to our own time. But so, but the Wednesday deliberative, we need to have them in for the deliberative too, because don't forget last year. Now that I think about it, they they postponed their deliberative. Yeah, it was all messed up. So, so last year it was, a, it was not a non-issue. I meant the year before. So it was not. It was a non-issue. So we can just plan for a, a meeting on the second Wednesday, the second, if the room's available. Is that the first one? Yes. Yes. I think it is. You can't have it the second one. Well, that's uh, we'll be at the wear deliberative anyway. No, you can have it the second. So the wear deliberative is not a Wednesday; it's a Saturday. Correct. Wear schools. That's what I meant to say. The where school. When is the where school? The, the ninth. No. On the Wednesday, the second Wednesday. It's the second Wednesday. You're right. Sorry. The one right. she said I can't have. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we got school on the nineteenth. So it seems to me like are we gonna are we gonna discuss vote and do all of those things in one day I don't, we couldn't do it last year we See, almost did it though i know we, we were did. close i know we were so close so the big question <laughs> is do we just want to schedule three meetings three wednesdays in a row and use only what we have to i don't want to overcomplicate things but that seems like it let's if we plan for the 19th and the 26th and the second as our backup is the room available the 26th i don't know yet i haven't looked that way <laughs> I, can't, I can't do the 26th you can, okay. you, can, you can do it without me, but I can't be <laughs> it's here. January, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. January. Uh, what about another day? Any other day, I yeah. We did like one Thursday, was that last year? Yeah. Because of scheduling? So is the question is, Naomi, is there a room available, is this room available on the 27th? Yep. Yes. Okay. That's Thursday. Yeah, I, I, so, and I'm looking for input. I don't. 1927 Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. And the two, if we need it. And then, you know, I, like she said, we almost did it all in one day last year, so. Okay. So the 19th is with the school, and then our deliberations are on the 26th and 27th. No, no. The 27th. 27 26 is off. And the second um, needed. 27 and possibly the second if we need it. Now, the only, the only thing that I had suggested earlier, oh, let me look at my notes here. I know I had said that if we needed um, someone from the town to come in, if we, if we want someone to the town to come in for questions, we could do it on the 27th. The question is, when do we want to make that decision? I think we have to leave it up in the air. So how do, the big question is, how do we make the decision on <clears throat> outstanding questions? What I don't want to do is create crazy email chains and communications, and then the budget's going to get, they're going to finalize things with the town. There's going to be a packet sent out to us. Um, okay. I don't really have an idea on that one. Do we tell them on the, well, can't we tell them on the 19th that we want to meet 
we'd like them to come in on the 27th for questions or do we okay. tentatively make another meeting for like the 20th or 21st so then we can have the town come back in and ask those questions i think it's a really good point so then the question i'll ask to that is for the people that are here are you guys comfortable if that you've got outstanding town questions getting the questions answered that evening and then go right into voting because I, I am yeah then okay yeah. so what we'll do is we'll make on the 19th as a committee that will be one of our agenda items to discuss the town and outstanding questions i have a question tom yes tom actually it's for naomi um as far as the presentation to this group about the uh, communication article were you planning to have a, a presentation here because it, there's so many parts to it as yes. you said uh, and I think that in order to make a decision as far as a recommendation we really it would make more sense because there's a lot of, I, I'd be honest with you just want to push the button and talk to somebody I don't know how it works I'm sorry I, I said all I want to do is push the button and talk to somebody I don't know how the airwaves travel and the trees and the leaves and everything else so and they, they, we did have a nice presentation. The gentleman came and talked for a long time. If you wanted to look at the YouTube, um, yeah, we can, we can shorten idea. that by sh by far and make a presentation. Yeah, I didn't know if uh, Jack Dearborn is coming back for a presentation because he's kind of spearheaded it. I, I don't know I, what I the mean, he's, are. he's offered to come back because it um, is confusion. I mean, I've seen the presentation a couple of times. Mm -hmm by attending board meetings, but He'd be happy to come back most people here have I, I can't explain it, so. Yeah, I, I have full intention to watch the video, but it's obviously better when you have someone to, to talk to your point. I mean, it, it's, it's, I think the whole thing is, is quite complex. Oh, it is. And, um, coverage maps and so my personal opinion is we need to hear a, a package before uh, we can really tie it in with the fire chief's proposal and, and everything. Um, it's a big deal, and I think it's, you know, I, I have my strong opinions on it because uh, we've heard so much over the years about the lack of communication uh, and how it works. But I just want to make sure everybody knows uh, the details of it. And I'm not sure we could do that just from a paper warrant article. No, no, you aren't going to. And he's welcome to just tell me what time and, and what day. I just don't want to infringe on the school. You know, I know right. you've got the school on the 19th. I can bring him in on the 19th, it's not a problem. I think, as I'm, I think about this here, you know, even watching the video, that's probably all of the discussions on how you came to the decision you made. The town is going to make a decision on Monday on what the outcome is. Right. And so it's almost better to hear back, we made this decision, here's the reason why, and here's the high points. So I think that's the way to go. Not because. I don't need to hear why everybody is deliberating. I understand the radio technology, and I still don't need to hear that. I'd rather hear why the smart people in our town made the decisions they made, why they didn't make other decisions, so that we can make a recommendation. And so would that not be Jack's presentation? Well, I don't know that. That's well, that, was, that was my... Uh, I mean, he knows more about that. Even, even after the town <coughs> does... Because you, you kind of need to go through and figure out your numbers, and I think that was a big conversation last night, or Monday night. Um, you've got ARPA funds that come in the picture, and, and you weren't sure how the, all those wheels were going to fall together. Um, I mean, maybe Jack is abreast of that. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it'd be better to have Chief Moore present. I, I don't know. Who, who would be the... Jack has been the lead with um, r, r I mean, I'm sorry, <coughs> with Motorola and Two-Way yep. Communications. Okay. Jack has led... Jack has worked with them on the maps and everything else. He took them around the sites. Okay. So nice. he's really familiar with everything yeah. that they put in that presentation the other Monday night. I think just a summary would be. Yeah. 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 Be all Jack's that. pretty good. I mean, and, that, and that's why I was saying that instead of meeting on the 27th with them, we did it on like the 20th or 21st. So then we have time to digest it before we're sitting down. I don't know. It's my thought, and everyone else can decide I what they yeah, want to I do before they're, we're sitting here saying, okay, now we need to make decisions, because I know for myself I need to walk away and I need to think about it. Yeah, okay. That's, that's what I was asking about, same yeah. night and deliberation. Yeah. So. Things hit different after they absorb. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they really do. <laughs> 
so let's go back back then. So Megan, are you saying that we should look at doing the 19th and the 20th and, and perhaps getting Jack in here on the 20th? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Normally in past years, we have had two meetings a week, like in crunch time like this. Like, and I, that that's what I would suggest. Instead of trying to squeeze them in on the 19th or not give the school enough time or, whatever, or be here until midnight, because I didn't like those meetings when we did that. Uh -huh. um, my brain stops working at a certain point. Um, my suggestion would be that we tend that we have him come in, even if it's a short meeting of an hour, um, on like the twentieth, and and go and have him present to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And then we can have the the discussion on the rest of the town stuff, like we were talking about. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we can start having our discussion amongst ourselves that night, and then come in on the twenty seventh if we want to, or we can just come in on the twenty seventh and do all of that. Okay. I don't have an issue with that. Does anybody else have an issue with the 20th? That's the Thursday. Like the 19th and 20th. Is that 6.30? Well, I was going to bring that up next. Um, if we're going to do two in a row, I, and I think especially because some folks had a hard time getting here, do we just want to go back to 7? If we're going to do two nights in a row. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't want people rushing, especially in the bad weather. Like, my wife's a little off the road this morning. Like, the roads are getting a little rough this time of year. Let's just. So what we've come up with is the 19th. Um, so should we ju let's just switch to the seventh on on the, the seven o'clock on the on the nineteenth? Do you want me to let Jackie know, or do you want to do that, Megan? I can let her know. Okay, so seven o'clock on the nineteenth, and seven o'clock on the twentieth of January. Seven o'clock on the twenty seventh. Yes. Okay. And I think right now, I don't want to talk. Let, let's just scratch the second. Uh, for, can, can I just? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. So you need the second, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. to finalize it, you know, the, the okay. fine tune. And then I clean it up on the second. And then I, you need it by when? She needs it by the first. No. No, because the first time you need a copy of the, anything for the, is for the ninth. For the ninth. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, so I mean, because that's the one that they, they, they walk in and they have a public hearing or whatever. Uh, Session. I'm sorry, deliver a session. Okay. So. Yeah, I, you know, I appreciate that. That's, that's so um, 19th at 7th. We're going to keep the 20th at 7. The 27th at 7. And then February 2nd at 7. I realized um, after we scheduled our last meeting there were people here that didn't know our meeting was 6, 6.30 until I sent the update yesterday or the day before. So I will um, email the people that aren't here tonight so that they know it's 7 o'clock because who are we missing? Gary. Um, and I don't know if, you know, if Tammy's coming. So I'll just I'll send an email on the, on the time updates. Okay. I think we're, we're going to schedule. 20th, 27th, and 2nd. Sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. hey, with, the, with the schools coming in on the... Uh, the 19th. 19th. Um, and you're in contact with me. I just had a, had a, I had a couple questions to ask them in advance, but I wanted to distribute them and, and see if everybody agrees. Or you may have other questions so that they can, gives them a chance when they come in to be prepared so you don't get hit with a question here. <coughs> I kind of got, it, it's only a couple questions. But. So, Bill, I don't know that anybody needs to approve your questions, but it. No, well. But I think it's an opportunity for everybody to add to it. It's more than anything. I don't want it. I don't want the perception to be that Anderson's talking to the to the SAU and as the, for the committee, which I'm not. <coughs> Every time I talk to Chris up there, uh, who's usually who I talk to, I'm, I'm addressing not as from the committee, but just personal questions that I have to bring back answers to the committee. But where they're coming in on the 19th, it's an opportunity for us to. Front and load them with a couple of so things. how the question is how are we going to deliver those? Are we going to send an email just no, to Jackie, or are you going? To, I no, I meant to the school, not to us. To the to the SAU. The SAU. Uh, I don't. I just have it in the form of. This is just a copy of some questions. 
And I'll tell you what, what the concern is that I had, and this is just me speaking. It's, it's to do with two issues, um, the kindergarten thing, issue and the, uh, just with their total budget, and when they talked about this issue, maybe two, and I, I know they can't identify specifically, but Thank you. I guess I wanted to, uh, I think what concerned me on the kindergarten proposal, I, I would, <clears throat> I think people ought to vote kindergarten based on whether they think, hey, is, is full day kindergarten going to be a good educational advantage for the kids going into the, to the elementary school? The way it's presented now um, is consistent with what the school board put as one of their goals, which is develop a full-day kindergarten proposal which stands the best chance for passing. Now, I look at it and say, <clears throat> we as a finance committee have an obligation to look out for the, for the taxpayers and, and what they're, how they're saying what they're saying. And the pr proposal that was presented is the best case scenario. It's 100 kids the perfect fit for getting the maximizing the state funding and having five classes and it's going to save lots of money. I don't buy the lots of money savings because if you, as James asked when they were here, what's the break even point? If you suddenly got 85 kids, you don't, uh, you suddenly aren't saving money because you're not getting that, the 15. Yeah, it was close to like a break-even or something. Close like to a break-even. And <clears throat> I looked at it and I said, okay, I think we ought to ask the SAU on, <clears throat> on another scenario, this is the best case, this is the best case scenario, and over here, if this happens, the, finance, the financial aspect of it is going to be reduced to zero. And I would contend, let's say the teacher's contracts gets approved and the para contracts get approved. What's that going to do to the, to the bottom line? Well, those increases are going to be built in, and that's going to further reduce. So I don't think the full-day kindergarten program should be sold as, oh, we're going to save lots of money. I think it should be based on whether people want it, and they want their kids in full-day kindergarten, moving forward into elementary school. Or, but it shouldn't be sold as, this is, this is going to be a cost savings in order to get it approved because I don't buy it and, and in the future personnel costs are going to go up much faster than say transportation contracts and state reimbursement levels so I, I think that we owe it to the taxpayer to present a balanced view so that they can make an intelligent decision just a random question that came to my head. Did they ever talk about if there was going to be an option if someone didn't want their kid to go to full-time kindergarten? Ooh, I, don't, I, didn't, so. I don't think I heard that. You mean like keep them in they half day? If they, wanted to, if they only want to do half day. Yeah, I don't. Well, we can ask them on a night. I know. Because I, I know a lot of, I know. No, I'm just yeah, thinking. Because I, don't I think know a lot of people who have talked about that. Like, yeah. I wouldn't put my kids in full-time kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people mm -hmm. think that, well, I know I, I, you know, I don't want my personal views, but yeah. half day is a nice Transition. Yeah. Transition. Transition to a full day program when you get to first grade. That's it's just a question. So yeah. kindergarten is not required. No. No. Period. So nobody has nobody has to send their kids to kindergarten. No, I so agree. They right. want to. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm just yeah. curious because I sorry, it was just a question. I yeah. just couldn't remember yeah. if they had discussed that. Yeah. 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 I know in some larger districts they give you the option full or half yeah. Yeah. or they do a lottery for full day and uh, fill mm -hmm. how many spots yeah. for full. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the issue I think that we would come up against with offering that as an alternative is we're back to that requirement to bus. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, I realize yeah. that. Yeah, I believe yeah. it was seventy-eight thousand dollars. Seventy thousand. They, they, yeah. they were citing seventy seventy thousand. Yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. For that so, midday. And the other, yeah. the other, yeah. the other thing I got in there on the kindergarten is, and it kind of got. Just blended. It. Oh, we have the space, and we can create three new classrooms, and and it'll work within the building over there. And and it kind of got 
ship, you know, they just rolled right through that one. Did, yeah. And I thought I heard something say about combining something. Well, they said that they said that they wouldn't have to lose the music room. Yeah. But they also said that certain classrooms require a bathroom within, and then yeah. that allowed them to accommodate a different age group. Yeah. It sounded like they were going to combine like special education. Mm -hmm. classrooms I heard, or I heard the word com combine something, but it got. Yeah, I believe pretty there was quickly. an extra room that was down below that was almost like an extra yeah. learning room that was never used um, full time. I don't know where that extra room well, would be. Yeah. Well, my my real my real the <laughs> crux just, like there's not a whole lot of room down there. But the crux of my question, the crux of my question is, great, we can fit it all in the same building. But as we move in the future, yeah. do we lose all flexibility now in Center Woods for ups and downs on grades one, two, three, four mm -hmm. that we? By, by adding three kindergarten rooms. I think the bigger question is, because since we're a finance committee, is what's the potential future costs when they're out of space next year? Mm -hmm. and what it, you, well, you know what I'm saying? They, they, like it's, well, and they also are having a, know, they're also having a study group for the facility at Center yeah. Woods. They're starting up a, that, that, was, sorry, one, that was addressed at one of the school board meetings. They yeah, talked about a, facili the, a study group for the Center Woods Elementary School facility for in the future as we move forward. Yes. Okay, yeah, I think she did mention something like that. She did, year, too. Of, yeah. some money or, yeah. yeah. You know, with COVID and everybody home last year, in five years, we're going to have lots of kids in that school. I know. <laughs> <laughs> not, not in my house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so that, that, that's, I, I think they need a, uh, I would like to see them, the, the, the SAU at, at the, public hearing actually present not only the perfect view to get passage, but also a another the scenarios that I was just talking about so that people have better information. I, I, I can't tell them, I can't make them do that, but I think they would get a lot more credibility with the public if they did it that way. I know we had that issue last year with the that Warren article that was only going to cost 5000 and and I don't know, we're kind of easing into that same territory here. If it gets presented as, we need to approve this because it's going to save money, because it's not going to save money in a long Or time. even the question of how many kids have moved in from all the, the housing booms and all that stuff, they don't know. I know, no, it's hard to know, but yeah, and, it's just, it's but, hard. And they're also saying 100 students, and, and, and Natasha did a good, ex she, did, she did a good job of yeah. doing the job that she was given with that. But, but we haven't had 100 kids in the first grade here in, in about three years. It's 72 kids this year in first grade. And he's still, I think in Natasha's comments, they still have five, teacher, five classrooms in first grade with 72 kids. So that leads into my next question. Yeah, Bill, hold on a second. Just because it can be have 20 kids doesn't mean 20 kids is a good classroom. Yeah. What's that? Just yeah. because you can have 20 kids in a classroom doesn't mean it's a good classroom. No, I, I, oh, I understand. It's 15 kids, so I don't want to mislead people here. <laughs> no, I, no, no. The, the smaller the classroom, yeah. the better the, the education. Sure. But our test scores are still pretty, you know, they're, they're still kind of. Yeah, I just like to your point, if you're making the point about the ideal scenario, it, it goes both ways. If you're going to look at it 20 students, then populate it 20 students, but that's not the best for the kids. The best yeah. scenario is less kids in the class. Yeah. Is it going to you yeah, have but less at some of a point, return? At some right. point, if you had, question two, if you had 1,027 kids, grades 1 through 8 in 2016, and today it's 891, and most of those grades have reduced, when you look at the enrollment, has reduced over 20 per grade, yeah. there's potential for staff reduction, which may be what she's talking about with a position that, that I don't know. I don't know because you can't get into specifics. But well, that was stark. She was talking about removing staff. No, no, I, that I don't think so. That was where. I don't think so. I think it's where, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's yeah. kind of connecting the dots with this. Yeah, I mean, either way, I, I honestly would program. I would like. I would like. I would like them. I would like them to just say in 2027 we had staffing at this level, grades, you know, teachers, paras at, at this level, and in 2021 we have staffing at this level. That was my. I mean, you've lost a hundred and graduating class. You've lost a hundred and hundred and thirty some students over eight grades. And has there been any reduction in the in the teaching staff commensurate with that reduction? Because if we're looking at, we want to get teachers' contracts approved. 
We want to get para contracts approved. Um, the biggest costs in your operating budget is people. And if, and if you are making efforts to, to keep the staff consistent with the level of students, you probably stand a better chance of getting your contracts passed. But, I mean, if you think I'm out of line on that. No, no, yeah. not at all. No, I think that, I think that this is, this is I good mean, to I, give them in advance. Numbers are, those numbers are available, I mean, because, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I sneezed and she said, ugh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she was saying, oh, to my comments. <laughs> so, Bill, are you, I think what you're looking for is just, uh, are you I'm looking, just looking for us for, to say? I'm looking to front end load the SAU. Hey, you're yeah. coming on yeah. the 19th. These are some of the occurrences. I, I don't, look, if you're looking for, I don't, I have zero objections. I think this is no, good no, to, to bring up the I discussion. I appreciate you bringing it to us. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think you're on the right track, and let's, yeah. let's have it. I'm not trying to be, you know, Mr. Nasty with the schools, but, I mean, we deserve answers. And the, and the taxpayers deserve answers. I mean, especially on the kindergarten issue. So then the question, so now Bill is spearheading this. How do you guys want to handle, are there other questions you want to add to it so we send one request to them on what to be prepared for? Does, do you guys want to think about it? Like, I'd rather send one request. That's my only ask is that let's just send one, if we can, that says these are all the topics and what we'd like you to address. So I guess, does it, do you guys want well, a day want or two days well, or a couple days? Yeah. And then, yeah, can... Just because I wasn't at the last meeting, I just want to reread the, the minutes and uh, kind of. Okay. And I don't think that we can say that no one can't, that someone can't bring up a new question. Right. right. This is just like these are some yeah, yeah. of the questions that yeah. we have. Let's just be as organized oh, so yeah, be as we can. Be fair to them before they come, so they understand what we're looking right. for. So at least for sure. let's just set a fair expectation for when you would, when we should this should be sent the the, the master list, right? So if they're coming here on the nineteenth. Jeez, we're only on the state. But fifth. I think even mm -hmm. oh, yeah. in a week, it would be, com the, I mean, that gives them a week of time. Yeah. Yeah. So are you comfortable spearheading everybody else's questions? Do you want to send it, yeah. or do you want? Okay. I can. I can. So I'm going to propose, and you can do it the way you want, that if you guys have questions or topics to add that you want them to be prepared for, get them to Bill, I would say, by next Wednesday? Yeah, that's a, that's a Wednesday before, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. That, that, that doesn't preclude on the spot question. No, 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 of course no. not. Right, right, right. not because a lot of times the questions come from yeah. their Agree. what's being discussed. I think, I think this is great because it gets them in the mindset of the way that we're thinking. And if they want us to support them, then they got to tell us the right story so we understand what we're going to support or not support. Do you want Bill to, when he sends this, to CC you and I so they know that it is coming from the Finance Committee? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you, whatever you want to say, but just on behalf of the Finance Committee. Well, I will. I, whenever I'm talking to him now, it's, it's, you know, who I am, but I'll preface this by saying. Yeah, it's always good to see us. Hey, hey, we met, and these are the questions we came up with yeah. in advance of your meeting. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just a messenger for is the committee. It, is the SAU budget transparent? Is what? The SAU budget, it's $1.7 oh. million. Is that... Well, that's another. I didn't add that one, but that's a good one. <laughs> but we can't do anything about that. But at the last meeting, that's why I asked him. I said, "What? What? How come the SAU budget went up by twenty-five percent over the last two years, two hundred and some thousand? But the, our portion is, you know, spread across the school districts." And I mean, what Jackie's been doing, the way, way I see it, a lot, a lot of like her coaches and her administration. They're, they're all underneath that budget, and it pulls them out of the, yeah. the contract. pulls them out of the... Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's union. They've, got, they've got 17 people working in the SAU up there. Yeah. It would be interesting to see. I think we can get it online, but it would be interesting to see, like, where the changes and what has been pulled well, out of Well, I'll add that operation. as a question. I'll just say, can you, can you quantify the 230-some thousand dollar difference in the last two years in the SAU budget? Well, they did try to answer it, but let's ask them to better quantify it because it was something about yeah, values. And, 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 yeah, and, and, and it wasn't really and, and, and a, Zach, it wasn't and, a firm answer, but no. yeah. Yeah, we're, like, and, and Zach, I think, from John Stock, he, got, he said, yeah, we're trying, we understand that, and it's a concern of the voters, and we're trying to manage that. Yeah, but it's... It doesn't. It doesn't it's help a, us. It's a gray. Yeah. It's really a gray area. That yeah. There's, and there sounds like they're trying to take more from the operation budget and put it into the SAU budget. Right. And they're saying that the I don't know. It's it, it benefits I everybody. Get it. One person here can benefit everybody rather than five of them yeah. spread across the school districts. That is what they said. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
I get the parentheses. So, so Neil had a question. I was told, you don't. You're all set now. Okay. Okay. So I had a question with regards to the um, the goals that were uh, put forth for the hundred students versus the eighty five, based on my presumption is population growth. N and that's what I'm is that population growth, and if. I think Natasha was saying that the, the expectation from her discussions with surrounding school districts was that the enrollment level of first grade will dictate what the enrollment, pretty much what you can expect in full day, when you go to full day kindergarten. And then they took an average, they went back and grabbed, uh, oh boy, it was either five or six years. They went back for a, a, a grab. I don't want to say it again, the answer they wanted, but there are more when they had a, like 127 in first grade one year and grabbed that and brought it forward to get to where you're around 100. In other words, they did an average rather than a trend. Yeah. And the last two years, it's been, I, I, I have the numbers in my book over there, but I believe it's 80 some and then 72 this year. So the trend is Down. Not, a, not towards 100. If you go back far enough to grab it, you can get to 100. This is the bubble year of the kids that are in fifth grade now. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's right, Megan. Yeah. Some, of, some of it, too, I think, was when they talked to other towns. Yes. They saw their, when they went to full time, they did see their enrollment increase, but the, which I assume is because you know, there are some people that can't put their kids in full in half you know in a half day program but now that it, there's a full day available yeah. so oh i can do that we'll see if, if if we go to that we'll see what happens but i I'm, I'm a little skeptical i just think that you know when i spent a lot of years out on the water in the coast guard but you go by an iceberg and you see this much and that's what we're seeing i want to see the rest of it yeah i want to see it and i want that everybody to be able to have a chance at seeing that so. okay all right, so we're good there. Everybody get whatever you're going to send for questions by the to Bill by the. Do you have my? Uh, I think you have my email. You're ref man. Yeah. How can we not? Ref man. <laughs> I ref was, man. I was earlier today. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And so, um, Bill will send it. He'll CC us. Um, okay. I think we're good there. Um, it's getting pretty late here. Um, does anybody have any? Um, the only old business I have is. Um, uh, meeting minutes. Um, does anybody have any old business? Anybody have any new business besides meeting minutes? Um, I'm going to, I really don't. I was prepared to talk about some meeting minutes stuff, but it's quarter past nine, um, and we've got plenty of time to do it unless you guys really want to sit and talk about it. I only went through two of them. Uh, we're going to have to correct. I'll send you notes. You guys ought to be correct. I had some notes, but I'll add some notes. I'll send it to you about the dates. And we'll get that fixed. We'll just vote on it the next meeting. I was prepared to ask that we um, accept it, but now they're wrong. So. Well, the problem I had is I, I, I did those up. I waited about a week before I did them up, and that's, that's, that's asking for trouble. I shouldn't be judged. I'm not judging anybody. So, is if there's any other final comments, questions, uncertainties, we on the same page? Uh, I'm gonna adjourn this meeting. Okay. I just sorry. I mean.